It's Fizz Clan! KDS, welcome to the stage. How are you doing? I'm fine. Very happy to be here and won the match. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been phenomenal so far. You've been highly regarded as the favourites coming in. Does that give a little bit of extra pressure? Do you feel yourselves that you're the favourites to win this tournament? Yeah, us in WCFN are the favourites in my view, but uh, we are more confident with this favourite thing, not pressure in, in us. Yeah. You have been having an incredible tournament, personally. How much are you enjoying yourself? I think you're on a 2.0 KDR throughout the tournament so far. You're on fire. Yeah. I'm very happy. Uh, my team helped me a lot to do this, and I'm just happy. Yeah. Do you want to give a shout out to your fans watching at home? Ah, posso falar em português? Sure. É... Obrigado aí, galera, que tá vendo a gente aí. Hoje a gente vai jogar contra esse aí e pode ter certeza que a gente vai ganhar. All right, good luck. It's time to bring out their opponents. Are we ready to bring their opponents out? <laughs> Touching down on home soil for the first time at a major in years. They have got a phenomenal All-American roster ready to grace this stage. It's SSG! <laughs> You feeling that home support right now? I'm ready to let this shit hang. That's what I'm ready to do. Are you hearing that, Atlanta? He's ready to let this something hang. Uh, Ashen, you you recently turned 18, right? You're a, you're a young man in a big opportunity here. How do you manage to handle that level of pressure at such a young age? I don't listen to the narrative. I know I'm him, so I just let it hang in and out of the server. So I don't care. It's Mark season. All right. What would you say to anybody who didn't expect you and your teammates to be here on the big stage? They're probably paying to watch me, so don't care. Do you regard yourselves as the underdogs at all here? Uh, we know we can be any team in here, so uh, you know us personally. We don't really care. We just you know we just go in and play who we play. We play our game, and then you know whoever wants to cross us, you know, good luck to them. What was your immediate reaction when you found out that you were coming up against FaZe Clan here in the quarterfinals? Don't care. I'm out for Vita King, so. Well, they're definitely listening right now, so I'm going to let you have the mic. What do you want to say to them? I'm letting my nuts hang. <laughs> Ashen, best of luck. You go get into position. Love that guy. I want more of that guy. All right, it is time for our last quarter final of day one of the Atlanta Major. Mandy, Dev, and Fox, it is time for a TriCast. Thank you very much, Ian. Yes, for NA's last hope, it only felt fitting that we brought back Fox, a North American analyst jumping on for the cast. Mate, welcome back. Glad to be back. If it makes you guys feel better, I can do the whole cast in Australian. Ooh. Please do not. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. Never I won't. do that ever again. <laughs> I thought that wasn't bad for him, to be honest. I we'll we'll okay. work on Thank it. You, we'll work on that. it. But maybe we should be the ones doing an American accent. We are here in the US of A, after all. Absolutely, with the confidence that SSG is showing, everybody should be proud to be American in this building. <laughs> and yet none of the three of us are, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> but here on the hometown major, 
North America looks to defend what it established in Charlotte a year and a half ago. And there's no doubt what the crowd is looking for here. FaZe Clan are a team to be beaten, but Space Station, they've got their work cut out for them. Yeah, look, all these quarterfinals, we've only had one free mapper so far. Surely we get another one out of these teams, right? I think it's about time for it. Fox, what do you reckon, realistically, are Space Station's chances of taking it to FaZe? FaZe is a difficult team, but if anybody can carry it through with the crowd on their back, it's going to be SSG with the confidence. And you, le you heard Ashen, I don't want to say, I don't want to repeat what he said, but that's going to be running through my mind this entire game through. I expect confidence out of SSG. These are the guys that came through the Swiss phase, lost their first two games, and did that BO3 run. One game at a time, they conquered their old rivals in Scars who knocked them out of Copenhagen, and they ended up securing their spell here in the quarterfinals. Man, it has been over two years since Space Station made it to the stage. What do you think they're feeling right now? I mean, I feel like these guys are just so excited. They're on home soil. And I think you heard it from Ashen. Look, they don't care who their opponents are. They don't care where they're playing, what they're playing. They're just going to go up there and do their thing and do it well. Fox, you're a bit of an OG of the scene. What were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say SSG, their mentality about taking better teams or teams that are considered better is phenomenal. We heard Ashen say something in a prior interview. He called, I think it was G2, gray faces, which pretty much means, you know, when you're playing in a level and you haven't beaten one level, you haven't gone to the next one. That's how they view every single team in this game. They're not looking at the names. They're not looking at the numbers or the stats. They're just focus focusing about what they're going to bring to the table. Which is a wise move when you're going up against a team like FaZe Clan. These guys have been in Rainbow Six for over six years. And that's the case for both FaZe and for Space Station. Believe it or not, in all of that time, they've only ever faced each other twice. Now, elimination lies on the line for one of these teams. For FaZe Clan, a whole lot of Brazilians back home and a fair few Brazilian teams here at the tournament that are looking and rooting for their success. But on the flip side, Space Station, like we've said, North America's last hope. Yeah. Love that from SSG. Get yourself into it. Finally back on stage after years of pain and disappointment, failure time and time again, never reaching the heights that they achieved in 2020 when they took down Ninjas in Pajamas, another Brazilian team, to take their first ever Six Invitational Hammer. It took dumping four championship winning players and a coach to find their feet. Let's be real, Fox, you first these guys a hell of a lot of times. This is the spiritual successor to that great Astralis roster. Absolutely, I mean, call out the main focus on their mentality, on the way that they play. <laughs> Look at them just meditating before the game, getting ready, ready into it. They really have a band of brotherhood, and I think that's probably the hardest thing for a team to get, is have five players that all play good, all play together, but you know who also has that? It's FaZe. Mm, yeah, FaZe are no strangers to the main stage. One of the most common names that we see at Rainbow Six events is FaZe Clan. Like we said, they've been going here for six years, time and time again. It's two years since they themselves were major champions uh, at the Sweden Major in Javle. And I think a lot of people are looking at them and W7M as the likely favorites for this event. Yeah, I feel like it's very fair to say W7M, they were the Copenhagen champions, but going back to back is very hard, especially in this day and age of Rainbow Six, where you've got so many competitors eyeing for it and FaZe is one of those teams. And FaZe have found themselves in a grand final, but losing it quite a few times as well, back at the Berlin Major. They've also found themselves constantly up against Brazilian rivals, like they had in Copenhagen, where they were knocked out by Team Liquid. I think their track record against NA, though, looks pretty good. Absolutely. I mean, you could argue that FaZe is in the same boat as SSG, where a little while ago they made potentially a controversial roster change, picking up Handy and KDS. They pretty much revitalized the team in the way that they play and the structure. And not many Brazilian teams play like FaZe. Actually, no Brazilian teams play like FaZe. FaZe Clan undefeated in the major thus far. Three matches in a row, but they have not been tested to this level. Now they find themselves on a quarterfinal stage up against the last hope for North America. Elimination lies on the line. NA's last hope. Atlanta, are you ready?
It's time for Space Station to walk the talk that they have been shouting at their opponents this entire major thus far. They've already done what many thought impossible, making a comeback from the bottom of the Swiss bracket. And here they are on stage up against the Titans from Brazil. It will not be easy. Space Station will need every ounce of energy that the Atlanta crowd can give them. Otherwise, FaZe Clan will look to do what we have seen three times today, a swift 2-0. And that is the last thing that Space Station have on their minds. Two flashbang ops getting banned. I mean, SSG really sticking it to the Ying ban, which is interesting because SSG is notoriously known mm. for loving the Ying. Skyscraper is a map where she can take control of the whole map. But the Blitz, Blitz is interesting. I think that's a direct counter to Forest. Yeah, I think it is as well. They must have seen what Forest could do, wreaking havoc on the shield operators. And the FaZe Clan thought, nah, they don't want none of that. A zombie is a solid operator to ban Valk as well. Looks like SSG is trying to deny the aggressive playstyle that Cyber brings to the table on FaZe's side, which is FaZe's main aggressor on the team. The whole team sets up around him, finding the drones, finding the openings. But Skyscraper is a map that's difficult to find those entries on. Yeah, but what happens if even though the Valkyrie's banned out, even though the Azami's banned out, you're leaving in stuff like your Solace, like your Fenrir's, and even your Mira has been left in as well. So even though some of the intel has been taken away, there are still so many strong defenders left in the pool for SSG to pick up. Absolutely. This is FaZe's map pick, and as a result, Space Station have chosen to start on the defensive side. And I've no doubt that they can hear you. Those noise-canceling headphones, they, they're not perfect when it comes to you guys being as loud as possible. Well, FaZe Clan may start on the attack here, Mandy, but we know that FaZe are the best attacking team in the tournament. On attack, they have never won a round after losing the opening pick, but they win those opening picks almost 80% of the time. These guys are a team to be feared when they're on that attacking side as they start here on Skyscraper. Yeah, and that's the effect of having Cyber and even KDS now jumping onto that frontline role for uh, FaZe Clan. Previously, KDS, he was on MIBR, but he wasn't an entry fragger. And then when he came to FaZe Clan, he was called upon to be that second man to Cyber. And as Cyber makes his way in the building and he always goes in for those super quick entries and I mean, look, he's probably one of the most lethal players in the game. He has the killer instinct that I feel like is so unmatched by so many of our entries in the game at the moment. KDS is there as that second man, and they just, as a result, have such a strong front line. I believe it was a statistic that Jesse said on the desk that on attack, FaZe have not won a single round where they have been the first pick, mm. which just goes to show you how pivotal their strategy is around Cyber and the rest of the team setting him up to get those picks. But this tournament so far, Everybody's been showing up. Handy, arguably the best uh, the best support player in the tournament right now. Yeah, and Handy joining just after Six Invitational alongside KDS, making their way over from Furia. We talked about this already, Fox. You mentioned it. Incredibly controversial roster change, dropping two legends from FaZe, Bullet and Astro. But KDS is back on FaZe after two years since he was dropped. This was a huge risk, but could it be a winning formula? Absolutely. I mean, KDS on his previous team was almost a support player, and we talk about it time and time again. It's almost like FaZe Clan has four slower supportive members that are so good at gathering the info for the team and for their execute. Yeah, and what's more than that, with those two players joining from FURIA, more recently, of course, Romalio, the most sought-after coach in Rainbow Six, the coach for FaZe, he was poached, picked up by G2. <laughs> I've heard that there was quite a lot of interest in Romalio's services, and G2 won that bidding war. Now with FaZe losing that, they've picked up Raffadel, the previous coach from FURIA, back when Handy and KDS played with him. This is the first event where they're going to have Raffadel behind them. Is that going to hurt them? Has there been enough time for FaZe Clan to integrate their new coach when they need it most? Well, I think there has been, surely. I mean, uh, he's come back and he's joined two of his former teammates as well, of, of Handy and of KDS, that have both come from that same team. So. Both those players familiar with the coaching style um, that he might bring into the team. I feel like the rest of the team just really need to build their way around that, uh, sort of be able to find that merger of their identity between Furia and between uh, the lost parts of FaZe that are still left in this org. I would say they definitely have had enough time to set everything up, but I don't think many teams have really challenged them, especially at this tournament. That's right. The only overtime that FaZe Clan have had so far 
was against Dark Zero, 8-6. Now, DZ sadly have now been eliminated from the tournament, and it is up to Space Station to get revenge on their behalf. FaZe have only played three maps, Fox, in the tournament thus far, whereas Space Station, they've had a hard, grueling way to get here to the quarterfinals. 12 matches, wins, losses, it doesn't matter. They're here on stage today, and they're ready to play for the pride of their country. Absolutely. The more practice that SSG is able to have, the better for them. Especially getting Ash and cohesively on land. He's been phenomenal, but he hasn't been the player that we've been paying attention to. We've been paying attention to Fultz, hot and cold, and those are the standout players for SSG that I want to see go huge this game. And I expect that we will see a lot of Ash in this game, not just in the server, of course, but out of it. When it comes to those big moments for SSG, he is the hype man, he is the energy. And as soon as we see him start to dry up on stage, that's when I'm terrified for SSG. We need his energy. It's been a little while, but we finally have sent ourselves into the lobby. SSG starting out on the defense are taking us over to karaoke and tea room. First bomb site, looking for the extension over across on the other side of the map. Looking to play the Rome game as FaZe kind of actually brought a little bit of an interesting piece to this recipe. They've hooked along the Monty in the absence of the Blitz, of course, being banned out. Absolutely. Here's the Solus in play too. She's going to be very pivotal on the flanks, on denying the drones on the initial entry from FaZe, but they have that Monty if the drone's not able to find information. And he's going to start to cut down on the sweep and across the map, but that summer charge will not go off. A Mew Jammer protects Forest on the other side. Fittaking, though, with baby EMPs is going to open up that one, and it might force Forrest back into the safety of his teammates. He's actually going to hold on to this for a little bit longer. Having a difficult time trying to find a way into the map. Obviously, SSG not giving anything up. Fultz and Forrest stacked on top of each other like a sandwich. Waiting for the onslaught. Oh. One's going to go down. That's Forrest. Beautiful entry from Cyber. He is the main man who's going to get those frags. But Fultz is still in suit. Yeah, however, Hot and Cold has been dispatched with as well. So while it took FaZe a little bit of time to get into the map, it was pretty handy once they did. Now, J90, Jack is forced back and cut down. Way out of position. Fultz, the last one remaining. And he lies down below so far from home. And around the corner, KDS lies in wait. He hasn't yet heard Fultz, but immediately the sound cue has been manifested and Fultz is now being flanked. He is being pinched. They know his position. And then a 1v5. It matters not how good a player is. He is surely doomed to die. It's handy to find the final kill and a dominant opening from FaZe. Vidiking desperate for your affections, but he will get none of it. And the stats don't like FaZe Clan. Once they get the opening pick, their round conversion is insane. Cyber making his way on into Forest. Perhaps overstaying his welcome might be a fair statement to say for Forrest, who's all the way over on the roam, even though the wall was open up behind him. And even though he wasn't really in the safety of his teammates, he decided to stay and he got punished for it. Absolutely. It didn't look like SSG even knew that Cyber was able to walk in through office and potentially pick him through the wall. They were really setting up for those drones. They shut down the drones so well, and they saw that the Monty wasn't able to get any information at all on where Forrest was playing, on where Fultz was playing. They actually didn't even know Fultz was downstairs, which is unfortunate, because the rest of SSG came over to help Forrest, and as soon as they came over, each one, like a domino effect, one by one fell down. There's a lot of work still to be done for SSG. That was a very rough start to the series. And if that sets any sort of precedent for what we expect to see, then I would be very concerned for Space Station. A great start there for Cyber, but it was Space Clan together, methodically taking that map control that won them the round. Space Station need to fire up the engines, because if more rounds end in silence like that, then the American fan base will likely be extremely disappointed. FaZe have a lot of fans cheering for them, but very few here in the stadium. SSG weren't too happy with that one, and they've changed up their bomb site as well. They're not looking to repeat the same mistakes of old and want to try something new, test the waters against FaZe Slam. But it doesn't seem like FaZe Slam have changed their formula going into the map all that much. Vidiking once again has picked along the Monty, although this time we've got the double hard breach in both Souls and Handy going Hibana and Thermite. They really want to create a, a better entry hole in for their teammates as they approach the map. SSG is still playing very extended, so obviously they're not going to change anything from last map. They're trying to hold that full 
floor, top floor, with the bandit aggressing onto the wall to make sure that no one gets in the map. But we saw this is where Face Clan stalled out because they were getting their drones in position. And I really want to note how Vita King is playing the Monty. He's actually not the one that's being the first entry. He's playing it on the window, gathering all the info on where SSG is going to be cranking from. <laughs> Good one, though. But what that means is that Souls is a little stuck outside this Geisha balcony with the wall electrified on the other side. But again, kind of had doesn't really have a choice but to stick his face in the window. Oh. But there goes Cyber, actually, taken down by Ashen other, elsewhere in the map. Cyber made a very quick entry from the top of backstairs, however. Ashen was not dealt with by FaZe Clan, and they really have stalled out here. As you said, Fox, Vidikin getting all kinds of information, but they need a whole lot more of that to FaZe. In order to win this round, KDS has taken a hell of a lot of damage, and Vidiking finally can start to move in and push Ashen out of position. There's Fultz from below, putting on the pressure on the Monty to be able to shoot him out, but Ashen's not giving up, he's staying there. Vidiking's gonna go down, but he's gonna get traded out. Souls shutting it down to a 1v1. The advantage still in SSG's hand with the Solus below, an impact in hand. Time is on the backs of FaZe. They need to pick up the speed if they want to be able to get the execute. Oh, Forrest has just run a marathon as well. He went for the jump out and somehow did a big sprint all the way back into the building and got away with his life. Somehow he just passed KDS, who had an angle over on the main stairs, but wasn't able to collect the kill. Bolts though, he's still down below and they might just meet each other here. The way back in this round for FaZe is finding these isolated picks. Bolts has to be extra careful. Absolutely, they have to find the Solos. We mentioned it, that that could completely derail the rest of the phase. So KDS is down here hunting, right next to each other, trying to find the idea on a Fultz, but no drone is able to... Ping's gonna come out, oh. he does know. Does he? Fultz doesn't want to swing. Even though he's got the information, he decides to play it safe. And as a result, KDS is gonna be afforded the freedom to look for some vertical nades. And that is Fultz's cue to peak, but he's been read to perfection. However, for FaZe, there's no time on the clock and very little hope that KDS will achieve anything from this roam. SSG, it's time to crank, but they can't find the final shot. The Space Cowboys firing up after they found their first round. There's SSG's first round and a dominant one at that. SSG not giving up the whole top floor. They're not scared of the Monty. They're holding what's theirs. I got very stunted there. Go on. I was going to say, I don't know about you, Fox, but this SSG chant does take me back to 2020, the Invitational where Space Station won. The chants at that event were unmatched. A an event in North America, the Invitational, no less, the World Championships, and for the first time in years, a North American team won it. Now, that's the kind of energy that I hope that we can expect later today, and perhaps for SSG later in the tournament. Absolutely. I actually got a chance to speak to SSG the other day, and they said that now on stage, all of their screams, all of Ashen screaming at the top of his lungs, won't be heard by the other team, and they were very disappointed for that. <laughs> but <laughs> the other way around, they actually have the crowd screaming for them, so I'd imagine that all of SSG's power is going through the whole crowd straight into phase. Absolutely. But these guys... They've tied up the scoreline against FaZe. They really struggled to, to get in the building. They couldn't find an inch or a safe point of entry. And stats, they continue to be true. Cyber went down and SSG then converted the defense after that. And FaZe, they really have this such a strong reliance on that entry game working for them. And so now we go into yet another approach into the building for FaZe Clan. My question is, where is Cyber going and where is KDS going? Because these are the two that we want to watch out for uh, as they approach their way into the map. We want to see if they can unlock the rounds for FaZe Clan. Absolutely. SSG, again, not giving up the top floor. I'd really like to see if FaZe utilizes the Monty in another way to be able to get more information rather than sending Cyber in alone off of the dope call to go hunting and find that opening kill. We need to see a way to get the Monty more active than just calling out off of a window. Very different approach to the map, though, from FaZe Clan. They aren't going for the sweep across the map that we've seen them do the last two times. This time around, they're looking to probe all around on the outside of the map, and only now are they finding a point of least resistance, and that's on the top of the back stairs. Here comes Handy, gauging the adrenal surge, the Monty to support him. Oh, Cyber's likely to find the opening kill! Bolt's caught out on a rotation! A critical mistake, oh, and the stats may indeed damn SSG. This round is the second one is found for Cyber. FaZe Clan looks to convert a substantial numbers advantage. That's what I love to see out of the Monty baiting. 
Forest to come up into the smoke. Soul's gonna get another one on the Ashen, and it's another 5v1 for FaZe Clan. Jane, I know. Show me something. Nope. <laughs> you asked, but unfortunately, it was a bit of a big one to ask for, Fox. A flawless round and the second in a row for FaZe. I really like that one from FaZe. They took all the attention away from Cyber, who was all the way over on the other side of the map. The Monty was just one big ruse and one big distraction, and the moment that all of SSG turned their attention to him, Cyber came in with the backstab and got his two. And that really unlocked the round for FaZe. That was what we were looking for out of FaZe. Absolutely, exactly what we were talking about. We want to see the Monty get in their face, take the attention away, and then Cyber is going to do what he does best. Off the Doe call, he's going to take the, atten uh, take the attention back by getting two picks over by Howside by unsuspecting SSG members. SSG seem to be moving a lot in these early rounds. Bolt's caught here on an attempted rotation. Very similar situation for Hot and Cold, who looked to get quickly up. Another player fell in the same circumstance. SSG are gifting FaZe opportunities. <laughs> Devastating. I'd love to note that SSG, that is the third round where Fultz is downstairs with the Solus. So I like the little mini game that SSG is playing where Fultz is going to be directly below wherever the top player, Five usually Ashen, is going to be playing. But he got red last round very hard. Will they is to a bomb use the lesion in the same regard as the with Fultz downstairs, have more roamers downstairs to deal with Cyber? That is the question to be asked. Cyber now flexing over to the Lions, the Doke B, so still self-sufficient operator to aid his push in through the map. But KDS down below has an angle onto the vertical going into the bomb site. Now it is a T-Room and Carrier Key, so SSG looking to repeat the bomb site of the first round, but try and correct some of their mistakes. It does still look like they are extending across their full roam hold throughout the entire map, not just horizontally, but even vertically, like you pointed out, faults down below. But look at FaZe's setup. They're split all over the map. Usually they have three people by Black Door. And it looks like all of the effort that they're putting over on house side is a cell, is a fake to a cell to be able to get a pick onto Fultz again below. Aggressive entry from KDS. Will he be able to see Fultz right next door? Oh, here comes the E1D. KDS doesn't quite have the information. He goes for a vertical nade on that line of sight. That gives Fultz the info on where KDS might be. He has been spotted as Fultz. And he could back it straight into that nade. He sees the player and takes his head clean from Fultz. And for the first time, he's looking effective on this roam downstairs. Cyber's going to look to avenge his teammate, though, down below as well. The lion scan will ring true, but no one there to follow just yet. Still, he's moving his way on in, though, is Cyber. So is Handy. They really want to double down on this pick on the Solace. Wow, Fultz impacting into the bathroom. He's actually going to stall as much time as possible, knowing that he's going to get hunted down. And as soon as they figure out where FaZe is going to be, if they're not holding downstairs, Fultz can go downstairs. He can go back up red to assist his teammate. But FaZe is adapting accordingly, putting heavy setup over to Black Door and Geisha Window. It really does feel like a tale of whoever finds this opening pick can magic the round somehow, which, of course, is what the guys on the desk said. Let's see if FaZe can prove us wrong here. Very close to the bomb site now is Cyber. He has a player repelling on the karaoke window as well. Bitterking, though, he is ready to strike, and the bomb site is just around the corner from all of these phase players. Little do SSG know, but really the attention is starting to be turned in towards that bomb site, and it could be go time right now. And indeed it is. Souls with the repellion swiftly met by Forrest, and no reply. Cyber far at the top of the back stairs with no way into the site. He rotates downstairs. What is this from FaZe? Far too little and far too late. Two players down, 15 seconds 15 left on the clock. Remaining. This is misery waiting to happen for the Brazilians. An embarrassment for Andy and Cyber as they fall. Immediate reply from Space Station. A flawless round in their favor. Beautiful early pick from Forrest to stop that push in its tracks. Everybody from FaZe scrambling to find an entry into the site. Walking up the brown stairs with his back turned to a super, no a super 90. We've had three flawless rounds this game so far. There's only been one round where the losing team has found a kill. Jeez. I feel like that goes to tell the tale between these two teams. Right? <laughs> it's very much, it's all in or it's nothing between these two. 
Lack said it on the desk, this isn't an SSG that we're used to seeing. I love the mental games that they're playing so far, adapting off of phases adaptation. It really feels like a big chess game going on right now, where both teams are bouncing back and forth off of the information that they're gathering. And if it was a chess game, then I would be beating you, Fox. Oh, yeah, you discovered would. Discovered so far. You would, you would. I'm how many times have we played? I think like three. Yeah, and how are you four. doing? I'm 0-3. Oh and... Oh. <laughs> oh you have to find one, but that's okay. It's I'll okay. forgive you this time. Just like SSG, <laughs> we might find one today. Hey! <laughs> Look, That's very good. It's, the, it's the last chance for NA, as we've said, time and time again. So I think that they might have a little bit of plot armor here at the USA Major. Absolutely. This time around, SSG having one out, the team karaoke bombsite are happy to jump back over to Exhibition and Office. It doesn't look like they're changing the philosophy going into the bombsite that much, though, extending themselves over. The one big difference I think I would point out is the, uh, the presence of the mirror on Ashen. It will make the bomb site a little bit more of a fortress uh, with the main wall being open as well for him. It means that getting the thermite charge of, on souls onto the wall is rather unsafe and it'll probably be used for the roam clear instead. Absolutely. It's very important to know that Fultz, if he dies downstairs, SSG is in a way tougher situation. His constant pressure from below keeps all of FaZe on their toes. It looks like FaZe uh... Funnily enough, looking to attack the bombsite head on. For most of these rounds, we've seen some form of a clear, but immediately at the start of the round, using the exothermic and the Thatcher to open up a nice solid avenue on site will cut rotations and will pressure these roamers, considering the fact that they may have to fall back to support the anchors. But Vidikin wants to keep their options open. Oh, there we go. An impromptu mirror window. Wait, make the it are going to be tricked by oh. the mirror window? Um, that's an interaction that you don't see every day, but wow. okay, never mind. The second half of the Selma charge is at least going to be able to get the bottom one, but you don't see that one every day. The setup from FaZe is looking that they are trying to hit the site, but they love the distractions. Vita King trying to open up a potential sight line into the site to make SSG very uncomfortable in it. But as we say, the cyber goes down to Fultz downstairs. And an aggressive push from Ashen, he goes punished. But the firefights continue to resound in the server. SSG will not give up this control, but Souls has snuck his way in. Looking to get somewhere safe as Fultz down below looks to deny this plant, looks for something. If he makes too much noise, he will be heard, and it'll be fish in a barrel for FaZe to finish him. But for now, oh, he does get it through the floor! Souls falls! And with FaZe, only two players left standing, and so much left to do. But Handy's right in the bombsite, Dev. I mean, he's right next to it, and he's gonna call Vidiking okay, over as well. Bombs, but is this a false sense of security? Fault is down below. He has a C4 on Hot and Cold as well. Oh, J9-0. Sneaking in once again, just enough to bait the player, but Hot and Cold himself has been seduced into moving too far into the bomb site, and he will fall as well. A fake impact from Fault as he looks to rotate back up. J9-0. No line of sight for him. And the gridlock track sting is to lock him out of the side. A bit of an overpeak from Vita King. He needs to be extra careful. Oh, and handy. He's got the meanest angle I've seen in years. There's no way that SSG will kill him on this position. Surely not. He spots one cross. Vidiking finds one. Handy with the left hook. And FaZe once again win an attack round. It has been back and forth every single round thus far. The post plant too good from FaZe. Did you guys see how Vita King didn't even flinch at the impact below him? The confidence to force that case down because he knows that if he can put his teammate in the position, Handy had a beautiful angle from those aces. That's a callback to earlier that they were able to throw onto that mirror. Wow. Opening up that angle made it so difficult to be able to retake into the site. <sighs> they didn't even get a foot into the site. You have to admire the confidence there from FaZe. It felt like SSG were on for the retake setup that they had going on there. They completely vacated the bomb site. They relied on faults down below to give them the info. But when push came to shove, FaZe were there to meet them. Even off of the impact. <laughs> Sounds like he's screaming at the crowd. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Vita King is. Of course, he was called out by Ashen in Ashen's pregame interview. He said, I'm coming for you, Vita King. Vita King is coming for the crowd here in Atlanta, who have Five been dead left. silent. 
Fun fact, the Attack picture that Ashton has on a mo his bomb. monitor is a garfish, which he has been going around calling people that, so. <laughs> what? It's just, a, it's just a fish, a fish with a lot of teeth. <laughs> A, a fish with teeth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long, no, long, long snout. So is it meant to be a, an insult at people, how people look? I think so, yeah. I think, I think it might be. <laughs> There's some of those in the aquarium. Anyway, sorry. Great aquarium in Atlanta, I'm told. <laughs> yes, it was a very good aquarium, alas. We are going to go over to Kitchen Bum uh, for face plan. Sorry for SSG. On their final defending rounds. Looks like Handy on the other side is going to open up a point of entry for some of his players to go for a sweep. Oh, no. Oh, there goes Fox on the jump out. Shut down by Handy. And that's the Solus down. Fultz has been so good in those late round situations. Hang on a sec. Information. I think Hot and Cold's been misdroned here. They haven't seen him. He might find one. He gets his pick, but can he get away with his life? It looks like Hot and Cold is indeed able. And FaZe will be kicking himself at that mist run. That's the second time that FaZe has been a little sloppy on their entry drones, but of course, when you shut down an aggressive play from Fultz, you probably don't expect another person to hide behind him. You expect that trade right away. Very good pickup from Hot and Cold to be able to even the man count. But again, they've lost that information of the diffuser plant. So now I expect SSG, off of the information on what they get, they're going to go for a fight early on to get that advantage before FaZe sets up to execute. Well, they've done the early game, that was pretty hard, but now they're tasked with an even more difficult part of the round, and that's through the mid-round. Decision-making, now for FaZe on the side of the attack, what do they do from here on out? They have some pressure going down inside of Geisha, that's J9-0, that's feeling it at the moment. He's opened up an escape route, or not an escape route for himself, actually, he's gone and impacted the Selma charge to make sure he's safe for at least a little bit longer oh. over in Geisha. Ashen down below has just seen a player cross over, but Vidiking is going to try and initiate KDS in. And here comes the repel in from KDS, not taken out early, but taken out in response. Janono finds one, he's about to be flashed out of position, but Jack finds another one. Souls in a 1v4. Consolation frag is perhaps all he will find. SSG are looking to tie up this half. Defense has been hounding them, but they might be able to make this even and moving into their attack half with an equality on the scoreboard. SSG wanted those fights, we knew about it. Souls is gonna have to get into a couple of different fights if he wants a chance back into this round. He's gonna take one. It's a 1v2 for Souls. They know where he is, but he's got a little time to play with. It's so he's winnable. Behind the table. Ashen comes in and down. swings in. But at the end of it, SSG do finish the half. Three rounds apiece. Really solid round there from SSG. They kept their composure, especially hot and cold right at the start, like you pointed out. How was FaZe going to expect that? They didn't actually uh, ring out any of those logic bombs when they went in for the entry. They only relied on the drones. And so once they made their way in, they had no idea that Hot and Cold was there. There was no audio cues, there was no visual cues either. And I really felt like that was the play that tipped the round on its head a little bit for FaZe. They got really stalled out there in the mid round. They spent so long trying to clear out J9-0 that he was in his comfy zone just outside of Geisha and gunned them all down. Right here, we're gonna hear the dope cough come out too. That's why they didn't call the clear out Hot and Cold. They were saving it for the execute onto the top floor. And in tow, allowed Hot and Cold to get that equalizing kill back, able to b bring it back to his teammates up top, and they just set up waiting for the execute, waiting for the fight. It's surely a bit of telling of uh, SSG's desperation to make a risky play like that from hot remaining. and cold. You can't expect that to work often. Well, is it desperation or is it genius? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the two are not mutually exclusive, I'd say. I mean, the first five rounds, we saw Fultz downstairs on the Souls giving information. And I think that round, he maybe wanted to change the pace, go for an early pick with the Solus. Maybe he saw the player on a drone, thought he had a positioning play, but it didn't go in his favor. But it did set up hot and cold for it, though. Sometimes you got to make the sacrifices for your teammates. <laughs> Absolutely. Risk it for the biscuit, I guess. Risk it for the biscuit, love that. And that's all we've been seeing from SSG recently, is going for those risky plays, especially in phase two. Their backs are against the wall, and they needed to bring out these insane plays from the players that they have on their team. They can't keep them boxed up. And clearly they're showing a little bit more teeth this game. Here goes SSG on their first attacking rounds. The side has swapped, and as we like to say, Rainbow Six is the tale of two halves. And if they can equalize the 3-3, we're going to see ourselves in overtime. And honestly, that's what I want to see between these two teams. 
nice entry hole being opened up by Forest with the uh, adjacent wall to his exothermic charge being opened up as well. That does afford KDS a bit of a line of sight going inside a geisha, but Ashen's going to be there to challenge it. Oh, Ashen goes straight on in. What are you doing? What are you doing, SSG? They run straight into the meat grinder and FaZe laps up every free kill happily. Two players left now for SSG and they are being simply toyed with. Cyber is giving J9 no quite the headache here, taunting him. <laughs> so awkward. Oh no. But he will not find a kill. Oh, he's going to go again. Do it again. Do it again. Oh, J9 no is gone. Oh well. <laughs> the aggressive play from Hot and Cold to call his teammates over did not work. And now a monumental task ahead of the two OG players on SSG. Very good in these dead man down situation. That's when they get to play a little bit more loose. They were gonna rotate back over onto Geisha's side and hopefully start them out to the equalization. I mean, how does this happen Setting without phase over peaking and gifting kills to SSG? Well, perhaps Jen, I know coming up the back stairs could achieve something, just anything. No, nothing at all. And he puts him down. All up to faults. Once a world champion, now tasked with finding five angry Brazilians. The third flawless round for FaZe opens up their first defense. FaZe wasn't expecting to get off to that foot on their first defensive round. They looked to be playing very slow, forcing SSG to make those aggressive plays, and they were ready for it. KDS, obviously a big 3K in the round, shutting down the two players entering into Geisha with the DMR nonetheless. Was it FaZe being ready or SSG maybe not having a good think about their entry points that time around? It felt like I, I liked what Forrest did, getting the adjacent wall onto the Thermite and, and opening up the map uh, for SSG to have a more viable way on in. But it really didn't look like, I mean, we're seeing it in the replays now. It really had, it felt like Ashen had no idea that Cadius was yeah. there and looking straight onto him. And then the second player that came in was like, oh no, and then he got taken down as well. <laughs> Look, guy in the crowd, <laughs> our reaction is the same as you. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> what is that? No, you're absolutely right. I don't think they were expecting KDS to be so pushed up in drum, but they were making that play off of hot and cold going up through the brown stairs, but he was the first one to go down too at the exact same time. So off of the play that was supposed to be a bait, you end up losing three Five people on something that, did you really need to go for? Did you really need to call and just trust the Okubi call? Or could we have taken a little bit more time to just get in the map first and then make those plays that SSG is known to make. A lot of questions need to be asked of SSG at the moment. And one that strikes my mind is at what point do you take your tactical timeout? Attack half now, and attack is really where the challenges begin for Space Station. They're down arounds, and they need to start conjuring up some success here. They're going against what is one of the best teams in the world and one of the best bomb sites on a defender-sided map. This is not going to be easy. SSG, they are leaning into the sweep across the map. They've brought along the combination of the uh, J90 on the Lion and the Dokubi on Ashen, but here goes Hot and Cold. He sent himself in through the ground floor, the sole player on the Nook, looking to create an opportunity for SSG. Absolutely. SSG sending Hot and Cold to potentially get some type of a pick on a roamer downstairs, but FaZe have a good understanding that somebody is trying to find an advantage for themselves. They're not giving anybody up. They're not playing anybody downstairs. They're really holding the full top floor with all five bodies. But Han Colt's going to find that as Handy tries to rotate. And now the nades will rain from below. Perfect lurk from Hot and Cold. The E1D and the nades together, but not found anything yet. Wall being open, open up into Geisha. Oh, they're going for it. SSG are walking their own. Oh, no. Deja vu. But this time, Ashen gets the better of it. DMR in hand will take down Cyber. Souls though on the other si side with the SMG 11. Oh, that's a long shot to land, but it's actually Vidiking with his own gun in hand to take down J9. Uh, after the bloodbath, Space Station have lost their numbers advantage. They established early on. Folds almost securing that kill under Souls. And Ace Selmut may open up another avenue. But this roam has not been cleared. FaZe Clan is still very much at large. And there's KDS to spring up for another. Ashen's gone down. There's info for FaZe now. Fault's caught in the goo mine. He has to march on forward. These lesion mines as deadly as ever. Up to hot and cold, but Finikim shuts him down. Standing, waiting for an ovation, but none such will appear. FaZe Clan have a two-round lead. 
you could say that Vita King is indeed letting it all hang out this game. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what Ashen was trying to say. It looks like he's doing it himself. I feel like the lack of crowd for FaZe is giving them a buff. <laughs> How did they're enjoying this. They're toying with Space Station. They're rage playing. <laughs> they're just getting more and more upset, which fuels them. I mean, it's good. Anger is an emotion to lean on. Not many teams leaning on it. A lot of teams, when the crowd's against them, they crumble under the pressure of being hated, but not FaZe. Let the haters hate. That's what FaZe Clan have to say is they're going to go over to Run it's the third defending attempt over inside of Kitchen and Barbecue and looking to extend their way through the map. We're going to see a couple replays of the last round. Really nice shots, actually, from the players of FaZe Clan. Good King with SMG 11 and has got two, actually, as they try to make their way on in. So some really good stuff from FaZe Clan as the round closed out. But this time around, they're going to change up their bomb site. It is a tertiary bomb site. And being on the attack on Skyscraper, right? Yes, you might lose out on the primary ones, but if there's any opportunity to land an attack, surely it's going to be on the tertiary bomb site, the one that FaZe are least comfy on. I agree completely. I, I think Kitchen bomb site is very hindering on the fact that you have to hold upstairs. You have to maintain top floor control because if you don't, you can pretty much see every single plant spot and there's no way for SSG to really go for a plant. But the common theme here has been hot and cold, lurking and finding those picks. So we'll have to keep an eye on if he can get an opening and take the attention away from the rest of SSG looking to execute on the top floor. It does look like SSG are looking for something a little more direct going into the bombsite. Ashen was early on the rappel, but here goes hot and cold, like you pointed out. Going in from the other side of the map, oh. trying to find that first pick. He sees someone through the little holes in the wall, but doesn't quite connect the shots. I love the Brava clearing out any type of information that could be in front of Hot and Cold so that he doesn't need to make any noise. The Aruni Gate's gonna get taken down. He's able to crouch rock through all the way through Dragon if he needs to. Oh, wow, that's C4 perfectly timed. Genono very lucky to survive it. As you've said, SSG have made decent headway on the map control and now they've found the opening kill. Traded immediately by Vita King. But Ashen, his work is done. Four players still remain for SSG to set up for an execute. The top floor is still in hand of FaZe. SSG struggling to find an opening, and it looks like they're setting up for a kitchen attack where Line's going to be the only oh, member up top. No. But Andy takes him down, and they maintain top floor control. It's going to be so Tony difficult to get a, a case plant down. Tough spot now for FaZe. Uh, sorry for SSGs, they start to make their way on through. Here goes Hot and Cold. Can he open up the rounds for SSG? Does anyone to do it right now? It is Hot and Cold for Space Station. Numbers are even again. Cyber re-roaming on this top floor, looking for an opportunity to support his team. But Foltz has put Handy down. Hot and Cold's got a very solid read here. But does he slice the correct angle? Does he look for Cyber? Time still to work with for SSG. They do not need to overpick, but no. Has that been a miss drone? Could this be a crucial mistake to lose the round for SSG? Cyber peaks first. Hot and cold puts it to bed. Vita King now with it all to do. One versus three. He has been spotted. The space station looked to secure the round. Faults drops the diffuser. A high risk now that SSG could fumble this round. Vita King with so much to do, he takes a lot of damage on the re-peak. He could clutch this. It's so damn winnable. There's so much information inside. Forrest, if there's any time to cover your teammate, it is right now! Vita King just needs a bit more damage! One versus one! In the post plants, hot and cold bleeding out on the floor at Kitchen. And it looks like Vita King's got the read of his life. Forrest, you cannot fumble this now! Vita King! He's stolen the round away! He's stolen NA's hopes and dreams! He's clutched the 1v2 and put FaZe on map points! And such a crazy round there for FaZe. You called it. The top floor control was what they needed. And from that vital position, it was Vidiking to take down the diffuser. And then SSG went, oh no, we've got to take that one back. And as they went in and tried to collect themselves again inside a kitchen, hell rained from above. And that was Vidiking. And it's forcing SSG to take their tactical timeout.
There's a lot to talk about in that round that SSG needs to go through. Why, if you have the case, are you peeking the guy up top? <laughs> if you are going to get the case and plant, why are you planting in the one spot where Vita King doesn't have to peek holes, he can shoot through the wall? Very, a lot of questions on SSG's side, but high pressure situations take high plays. And that's exactly what Vita King did. He's been so good with the SMG 11 so far. Always trading back his team as they lose a member to, or an advantage. He's always there. SSG looked to be playing the pick game very well. They brought it into a 1v3. Vita King not losing his cool. Obviously, he wants to stick it to the crowd. <laughs> I mean, that round was so back and forth. At one point, we were like, it's doomed for SSG. They haven't cleared the top floor. It's over. And then all of a sudden, Hot and Cold comes in. He cuts down on the defense. And like, suddenly, it's possible for SSG. And then one tiny mistake. This was it. This was the turning point in the round for Vita King to land his clutch. And then, boom, all of a sudden, it's a phase round all over again. I can't believe he continued smashing that shotgun against the floor until he got the kill. And yeah, man. The frustration is palpable. SSG were neck and neck with FaZe until we switched into the second half. And since then, it has been all FaZe all day long. Three rounds in a row for the Brazilians on the cusp of sending us to map two with the momentum squarely in their favor. Hindsight's 2020, and unfortunately for Fultz, he forgot his glasses. <laughs> 2020, coincidentally, the last time we saw Fultz on the main <laughs> stage and performing in a grand final. Oh, it's been a hell of a long time. And SSG fans are just begging for another showing out of finals that they can be proud of. SSG's not out of it yet, though. They have a lot of good positioning in the way that they're setting up their executes. They're just losing in those crucial moments. The round was rightfully theirs and it was taken away and now they found themselves on match point. No more mistakes from here on out. We cannot see what was repeated in the last round. SSG are going to start out putting direct pressure onto the bomb site, the housing wall. Unfortunately, not quite being tricked by Vita King. He didn't want to on the other side, but hot and cold might. No, he doesn't. Vita King will behead him. The one Legion trap stopping hot and cold from completely getting into the site. He had to swing and he missed it the first time, giving his position away. Vita King was right there again. He's been so monumental on stopping the SSG solo players time and time again. Smart from Cyber. He's seen the hacked cap can traps and is like, all right, take those ones out. They're not so safe anymore. SSG, they've got to pivot now. That initial pressure onto the site didn't quite work with Hot and Cold being taken down. And now they're looking to sweep the map instead. It's Forrest and Fault to double down in their position on the other side of the map. They're going to recall Ashen over as well to their safety. And all four players are going to dedicate themselves to the push. These early aggressive plays from SSG are not working out in their favor. And it's constantly leaving them in these positions where they have to go a man down with these fast executes onto parts of the maps that they're not taking too much time to clear. A slow entry here for SSG, but finally Boots are in the building. It took them two minutes, but they are inside with a vengeance looking for a chance to inch towards this bomb site. But that time has been their biggest enemy. Making their way on in is J9 No as he unlocks the barricade and it's false to take down KDS on the other side. Now four and four, man advantage stripped away from FaZe Clan as they make their way on in. But it's Forrest who's made this big rotation around to the other side of the map with the diffuser in his hands. They're having a think about the bomb site. They're shifting their focus and this execute will be nothing but explosive for SSG. And that means it comes down to the big guns who must step up, call their names, and they must answer now, SSG. One player falls, handy to be traded. Ashen making his way up the stairs. Vita King put back down in his place. A 3v2 now with the Americans in advantage. But the two OGs for FaZe stand in their way. But they fall one by one! Space Station will not accept defeat! We continue here on Skyscraper as the Americans find their first attack. It was getting scary for SSG, losing the diffuser in an exposed position that FaZe easily could have held down. 
but they were able to find the rest of the picks in the site, and that's what SSG is so good at, is causing to you to, forcing you to look at all these different entry angles, but it's all about making those shots count. And that round, all of their shots hit. I really liked what Forrest was able to do in that round. Even though he actually ended up going going down once he entered into the bomb site, he did exactly what you pointed out that they did. They went for that pivot and they switched into a map sweep. But the moment that they'd established that control on the other side, Forrest was like, we need the pressure back on the bomb site. We need to make this push more multifaceted. And he went for this big wraparound takeover on the other side. And Ashen was there to, to clean up the pieces as well. He picks up where Forrest left off and he claimed two to close it out. Absolutely, Forrest going down there, set Ashen up for that whole round. Well, yeah. SSG have done yeah, one of insertion. what they will need to do two more times now, Fox. Yeah. It's Five a long road to overtime, insertion. but I think that that round shows that they can the win any of these attacks. The they can win from a man down. They can win from behind. They can win from a deficit. That's the space station that we've seen in Atlanta. Absolutely, but they're making it so much harder by winning these rounds a man down. <laughs> we need to start by winning them as a 5v5 or potentially getting the pick in their favor. But again, FaZe is very prepared for these aggressive individual plays. They're set up for them every single time. I gotta say, Fox, this is not a bomb site that we see that often on Skyscraper. Like the, the master bedroom and bathroom one? Why? Well, what is the magic behind this one? Not many teams defend this bomb site, which also makes it very difficult to attack against because you don't have the experience of attacking against it. I remember you guys actually asked that in the SSG bleed game and you, you guys yep. questioned it. <laughs> and the defenders actually ended up winning the round because they held the top floor site. And it's very difficult to understand what phase is going to be holding. You can extend in the kitchen, you extend through top floor, but Hot and Cold's got full kitchen control. He's got very good position. Can he find one of the site players to open up the site? So this is FaZe Clan testing SSG's problem-solving skills, but it seems like SSG are starting to be keyed into this exam as they make their way into the map. Yes, they do have a bit of a foothold over on the other side of the map, but so does Hot and Cold right next to the bomb site. He's made his way all the way into the ground floor. Oh, but he's spot on the long angle from KDS. FaZe was so ready for that lurk, Hot and Cold has been instrumental in opening these rounds, spotting opportunities for SSG. And now Ashen takes up the position that he left off. Hard to say how SSG claw themselves back into this round. They jump into Garden and look to shut down this player at bar. But FaZe know full well they do not need to peek. They can simply wait. SSG continuously finding themselves in these situations where they have to pull rounds Reloading. out of thin air. They know they need top floor control if they want to even get a chance to getting that diffuser down. But can SSG make magic happen? We've seen them do it before in this situation, but they need to do it again. Fault's just rounding the corner now as Cyber's going to look to take this engagement, but with the time ticking down, oh. they are going to feel the gravity of the bomb side, and there goes Fault to open the equation. Oh, Souls is gone as well. There's a real shot here, but KDS finds his third. Forrest and Foltz. The double Fs look to stand up. 20 seconds to play and handy. Oh, he's coming. He's coming for it, but he whips an entire magazine. Foltz might be able to refrag this, but no! Handy shuts him down. KDS a fourth. And FaZe put SSG back in their place and a one map away from a semi-final. And the heroes of NA will go down for one map, but not out just yet. This is a best of three. They have time to recollect themselves. But for now, FaZe will stand true. They're ready to phase up, completely unaffected by the lack of cheers that they receive here in America. They're used to it. It's been this way time and time again in Berlin, and now again here in America. SSG, you're on their last legs. FaZe has been so good at those opening kills, especially shutting down the early aggressions from SSG. They're really letting the crowd get to them and fuel their rage. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another map that they're going to have to go through first. And that map is Consulate to break down Skyscraper. We'll toss it back to the desk. Dev, Mandy, Fox, thank you so much. Man, FaZe feeding off, antagonizing our crowd here. I mean, Vita King standing up, 
pointing to the phase logo, getting that clutch play. We got to talk about Vita King. Where do we even begin? Oh, he He's played, playing out of his mind. He played out of his mind, undoubtedly, Jackie. Vita King was so incredibly crucial coming through from FaZe Clan, playing ridiculous. The 1v3, an absolutely unwinnable situation for most players. Through a hundred shotgun blasts, it feels like, finally denies the planter, kills the planter right afterwards, and then he's on a sliver of health. He should never be able to win that, and then he hits the headshot anyways with the SMG 11. Oh, it's just beautiful <laughs> siege coming oh, through. Meta King played that beautifully, a round that you should not be winning, and he played it as well as you possibly could. I mean, it's always nice to see from a player perspective of even my own, of just watching what a player does in those moments, the split second decision making, the rotations that they make, and the catch Forrest the way that he did. I mean, Forrest, it sucks for us. SSG because those are rounds that you need. Those are rounds that give you the momentum. And when you lose that, it's so draining. We're seeing a lot of KDS highlights on the defense too. I think he also needs to be highlighted, yes. right? We saw him at the very first round exhibition when they were round number seven. He finds two players walking into his crossfire, it feels like. There's just no information at all. He's cleaning up those players. This is the 1v3 ridiculous clutch yes. from Vidiking where he uh, denies the player after Beautiful he shot plants here. and then Great shots with the SMG 11. But again, KDS, when it really matters the most, the final round for him as well, a 2K in sight, the C4, the final plays, everybody from FaZe playing so well. Loxie, I do want to pick your brain about the early game. Both teams were neck and neck. It seemed like they were figuring each other out. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of the Los DZ game that we were seeing. It was very back and forth. People were figuring out what they wanted to do, how they wanted to approach the site for the next time. And the other team on that back end was figuring out maybe what opera they want to bring or how they're going to rotate somewhere. And then it switched sides. Yep. And then you saw, really, FaZe just kind of run away with it. They figured out what SSG is going to do. They figured out how they want to play against it. And that's where you saw SSG struggling on trying to force those rounds and those aggressive plays, and it just was not going in their favor. Yeah, so FaZe, they're a really strong attacking team, right? And with Space Station Gaming, they were constantly changing their pace. They would play one round really slow where they're not moving at all. They just got one pick, and then they sit still and wait in the site for uh, FaZe to bait their, all their time. And the next round, they're jumping three people out. They're getting hyper-aggressive. They're moving as much as they can. And it worked good enough to give them three rounds. And usually three rounds, great, and a half of Siege, that's everything you want. But on Skyscraper, you want to be hitting more. And I think FaZe Clan really took advantage of that when they moved to their defense. Three attacking rounds was just not enough for Space Station. Even if we give some of those clutch rounds back to SSG, maybe Vidiking doesn't go crazy in the clutch. It still looked like FaZe were the better team for the vast majority of those yes. defenses. So Space Station, it just wasn't enough. Well, we are not done yet. Map to ahead. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I want M80 to be one of the most successful and dominant esports organizations in the world. When the manager Golden reached out for a coaching position, I thought, why not? What could hurt? You just gotta take their soul away. Like, you just gotta destroy them. It's definitely better to let the play do the talking, but tend to stay clear of the people that have big egos. Energy carries everything into winning. This is Rainbow Six at its best! Try not to hold on to revenge too much the past. If we were to play them again, it would just be like, just that urge of competitiveness to beat them. We know our potential, we know what we are capable of. The opponents could definitely take the, the title from us. The past is the past, but in the moment you have everything you need to do to be better. I'm Christopher Budget, Associate Game Director on Siege. Siege is a tactical game, and while there's no better way to learn than the hard way, we're working on various tools to help you train and level up your game. Next season comes Map Run, and while you'll have to wait to know more, I can already tell you you'll be able to train on your favorite maps, such as Clubhouse, Oregon, Bank, Consulate, Chalet, and Cafe. Map Run will also be the best tool to help you learn the new map coming this season. And whether you're playing solo or with a squad, jump into Map Run and train your aim and your skills, and you'll learn the new map. Your friends will thank you when you reach champion. So stay tuned for the reveal and learn more about the new map coming to Rainbow Six Siege. Hey guys, 
guys, Gunner from Sonics here, and today I'm going to be playing Siege Sounds. Hey guys, this is Iconic from Amedi. Hello guys, this is Felipe Ox from W7M. Scan Suzuki no Fish Strike. This today I'm going to play Siege Sound. I think I'll do good. Shh, not, not too good then. It's good. Pion より a little bit lower than the other one. Yeah, I think I have a good pair of headphones, and let's see. Uh, it's organ spawn. Okay, I know this one. Dog sounds. Inu maki goe ga kikoiru. It's kennels clubhouse. Uh, I hear dogs bark, and this is the spawn of uh, in the garage of the clubhouse. Clubhouse, um, the, like front spawn in clubhouse. My final guess is clubhouse. Clubhouse no garage gawa no soto no respawn chiten no toku tte desu ka. I'm right. Uh oh. Oregon? 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 Bats made a meta. Perfect on Ogasta. Not Tom's Cassina. I hear like bugs. Like the sound of bugs. I'm going cafe. Final answer. I don't know the map. I heard a bell at the end. That's the only map I can imagine a bell being on. Dun, 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 dun. Cafe. What would this be? Like a mushino tomi dana. Shall I? Is it consulate? It's just like the, like the wood sound. Maybe now it's clubhouse. Because clubhouse, there are police cars. I'm gonna lock it in with consulate. That was not right. I never spawned there in my life, so I would never know that. Yeah? Yeah. There's no way that people get this stuff. Bank, locked in, loaded. Not sure, but I, I'll guess bank. I hear a kid scream in the background. Shall I? Chalet. 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 I got to. Uh, I don't know about the others, but really hard for me. All right, guys, I had a lot of fun playing Siege Sounds. I had a lot of fun playing Siege Sounds. I had a lot of fun playing Siege Sounds today, and uh, see you guys at the Major.
I need to give a shout out to our crowd. They literally just gave us a 10 second They know how to count down. down. Yeah, they give us a countdown. How's fire? Ask our director, <laughs> we don't need you. We got the crowd to give us a countdown. I'm kidding, Ask, we love you, but we also love this crowd so much. And man, what a great first map. I'm not gonna lie. How are they going to defeat FaZe? They're just looking so good, cohesive, coordinated. It's a collective effort. I'll say this. They okay. do have what it takes to beat them. We saw them going back and forth. It's just a matter of whether they decide to continue that aggression, and when it's not working, then to stop that aggression, or play a little more passive game and force FaZe into their line of sights, into the trade game, whatever. But they're playing into FaZe's power positions, in my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do think when we saw that first half from Space Station, they were mixing things up in a way that will give them success on a less defender side of map. When they played on Skyscraper, which again is FaZe Clan's map pick, they were really good at keeping the pace, guessing, right? Keeping everything up in the air. FaZe Clan didn't always know what was gonna come next. Now that we're moving on to Consulate, now that we're moving on to a, a map that Space Station are much more comfortable on. They've yes. played so much, very rare come through from FaZe Clan. I think that's gonna really empower SSG. Whilst they were maybe not so successful in their attacks, I think on this map, since we've seen so many good attacks with Space Station so far, they're gonna be a lot better. Yeah, and Fox said it too on the desk, you know, he really liked, he appreciated what SSG was doing and, you know, figuring out how they wanted to adapt, whether they were playing aggressive, whether they were playing it passive. But when, it, when you're being met on both of those fronts, you in that moment really have to figure out whether you need to stick to one thing or really swap somewhere else or whatever you got to do, you have to figure it out in that moment because if you keep trying to force something, eventually you're going to hit a brick wall. Okay, let's talk about Map 2 Consulate, the information up on the screen right now. So, Jesse, you were actually surprised that FaZe didn't ban Consulate. Can you elaborate on that? So, I'm of two minds about this. Okay. Because on one hand, the stats say Space Station should dominate this game. They're 3-0 and since the map came out, beating Mirage, Oxygen, and Bleed. Each game was extremely dominant, with Space Station's closest match being 7-3 against Bleed. And FaZe Clan, they played it once, their very first game on Stage 2, they lost to NIP in 15 rounds. So there's a bit of footage from way back then. They've owned, they've never won the map. On paper, this is so clearly an advantage map for Space Station. But we also said that, yes, a couple hours ago for Dark Zero on Skyscraper, and we saw an incredible turnaround from Los. So whilst this should be an extremely advantage map for Space Station, the fact that FaZe did not ban it makes me think they've got something in store for us. Oh, 100%. No way you're going to just let your map go through like that and hope that, you know, you're going to maybe squeak by. No, I think FaZe has an idea and a general direction of how they want to play that map and how it's going to counter SSG, especially playing that very recently to be able to understand what SSG is doing. Because I've talked about it before, even during the play-ins, is you can't switch a whole lot once you show it already. Sure, you can make, you know, small detail and what you're going to do and what you're going to change. But for the overall grand scheme of things, it's pretty much going to stay generally consistent. So that alone phase, whether they've worked on it, whether they did the prep that they need, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that they let this map go through because they have something behind that. Well, let's see how map two plays out. Dev, Mindy, and Fox, take it away. Thank you very much, Jackie. Yes, it is once again the last chance for North America. How many times are we needing to say that? Hopefully a few more if SSG can continue their quarterfinal run into the semis, hopefully even a grand final. But of course, FaZe are an unstoppable force. They took Skyscraper away, and now they look to take the sky of North America with it. Consulate is the next map. It is Space Station's pick. You heard the desk. This should favor the Americans, but FaZe Clan love being against the crowd, and they love being here in America, fighting for a chance to put the final American team down in the dirt. Let's get into Consulate right now. FaZe Clan, one map away from the semi-finals to face Los One and their former player, Cameraman, in that semi. On the other side of this game, we will either have Space Station fighting for a third map or FaZe knocking them out of the tournament whatsoever. After years of heartbreak for SSG, the time has to be now. Absolutely, and they talked on the desk about what does SSG need to do to win on this map? Does FaZe have something prepared? Honestly, the map doesn't necessarily matter as much as the way that FaZe is reading to, into exactly how SSG is playing. They know that SSG is looking for those picks, and they keep isolating that individual player. We consistently saw them last map going down, having to play a 4v5, and even though they can pull some of those rounds out of thin air, they have to lower the amount of rounds 
they pull out of thin air. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. You cannot rely on clutches. Inconsistent. As the band phase has flown by us here on Consulate, once again, FaZe Clan banning out the Blitz for the mm. second map in a row. They really do not want to play against Forest Blitz. And yet it was the Monty that was the real enemy of SSG in the previous game. A lot of good Montane play from FaZe. And already I'm seeing the Monty teased out here by SSG. Perhaps we will see a few more shields on what could be the final map of our quarterfinal day. You'd be surprised, but the Blitz... Oh, hold up. We're seeing a Cavera in the lineup. Could there be an interrogation? Ooh. Would this be the first interrogation of the tournament? Uh, I, I feel like it would be, right? Surely we haven't seen Cav be picked, or I mean, she's probably picked, but I the interrogation? I certainly don't remember Surely that would have been all over the news. I would have thought so. Well, uh, Mandy, do you recall the opening round of G2 versus Liquid in Copenhagen on the stage, and there was an interrogation by G2. I believe it was Doki. Mm -hmm. That was huge, and the crowd loved it. If Cyber is able to replicate that now, Fox, I think quite the opposite will be the case. Attackers are heading out. It'd be very interesting. I was going to say that I love the Blitz band because there's a lot of unconventional areas where the Blitz can jump in. You can actually jump in through the yellow skylight, take control of all of top yellow. You can get in very aggressive positions with the Blitz, and SSG is comfortable bringing that operator on this map, but opting to bring the Monty, so maybe a little bit more of a map clear that SSG is going to look for on this first round attack in the basement bomb site. First point of pressure will be the breach. Now, they haven't brought along a hot Keep and cold on the ace on the main wall just yet. They're just putting down the little secondary hard recharge on the wall, at least create a way into the bomb site if they so desire. Where hot and cold is though is over on the meeting breach. He's just opened up that line of sight to make a potential point of entry or more like a line of sight, I would anticipate going into the top floor. Oh, but he's clued There must be players down here that he knows. It's actually Cyber himself on the other side. And here Cyber waits for his moment. He was on forward. Are we surely going to see an interrogation? Another one could be on the cards, but Cyber finishes him off. SSG have fallen to pieces. What a way to kick off the second and potentially final map of the series for FaZe. J90, it's time to hit the road, Jack. 1v5, so much to be done. And for SSG, this is the last thing you want to see. I'd imagine he's going to want to use his time here to talk with the team about exactly what went wrong. And I'm glad that my eight years of experience was able to point out the Cavera. I feel so <laughs> smart. <laughs> One phase of the round, and also Ashen came over to try and help Hot and Cold, and he actually got down by the goo mine. So, unfortunately, he, fortunately, Cyber could have gotten two interrogations, but he already got one. You just want to leave with the second in hand. You don't know who's going to be behind Ashen. So, obviously, they take the advantage and they run. J9 is going to use his time to collectively talk with his team about where they went wrong that round, and maybe pad his stats a little bit. Well, FaZe are exercising all kinds of restraint in this 5v1. Yes, they're peaking, but they're not over-peaking. J90 is not going to be gifted anything, it seems. SSG taking this impromptu tactical timeout. J90 could really just stop playing completely and let the rest of his team focus <laughs> on speaking, but FaZe are letting him know that they know exactly where he is. Cyber wants it. Give him the 3k. Oh, yeah, no. He's going to run away. Go. That's all right. Oh, no. He's going over to, to yellow. Oh, no. He's going to jump out yellow. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, he's no. tempted. Cyber looking for a way Five to contest. J90 looking for some kind of consolation frag. Cyber will not give him the chance. FaZe Clan secure the round on the back of an incredibly rare interrogation. And with that, a setup phenomenally well into their opponent's map pick. SSG, SSG tried to sell a fake. They opened up the main garage walls. They aced open top yellow and projector walls to attempt to show either a site hit or a top floor take while they hit the middle floor. Kind of like a sa sandwich of baits while they go through the middle. And they were not expecting the Cavera close in the broken hall. He was able to completely shut down SSG's push, which was hot and cold. He was the bait. He was the player that was going to flank everybody in through piano. And they were expecting him.
I saw our IQ cosplay there. Have we got any Cav cosplays here? Because I think if there is, it's their moment. When you see the Cav come out, it's a rare sight in Rainbow Six at the esports level. Rare sight in the cosplays as well, but I've seen a fair few lovely Cav cosplays in the past. Looks like we're going to change the bomb sites now, however. Base Clan are looking yeah, pretty good after that round. SSG have got to shake the jitters. Now, Dev, this is my favorite bomb site on this map because it? it's on two floors and I like it. It's really fun to play and it's really fun to watch the defense have their interpretation of the bomb site. It looks like they're extending all the way over inside a break room. They're playing their rotation holes up here, making this a fortress. Handy's actually got the shotgun on the souls as well. But you also have to extend down into the basement as well. And that's where Vidiking on the pulse is going to wreak havoc with all that intel. And he's going to inform the C4s as well as the mid round plays through. The amount of verticality that you can bring on this site is monumental and it is going to be a big threat for SSG to have to deal with that first before they can actually get a plant. So whether they go down low into downstairs server or they go through Visa into Tellers, they have to deal with the Pulse and the Solus. So it does look like SSG... Oh, that was a nice trick from Cyber on the other side of that. It did look like SSG wanted to turn their attention in towards the basement, just like you pointed out. But their way on in has been tricked. That oh. hatch is no longer open. Oh, there goes Ashen, though, on his way in through B. So he's in and out straight away. Just wanted to take down the cam. On the other side, though, is Vidiking with the pulse in hand, collecting all the info onto Ashen outside. No real setup has protruded for SSG just yet, just clearing out their utility, using that IQ to figure out where everybody is. Handy oh, jumping out the window, he's gonna get one, oh, two no! for his troubles! He's gonna get cleanly back into the map too. Wow. To jump out the admin windows and find one player, and then the second be on their cams, it doesn't get much better than that. Now SSG are fighting from two players in deficit, hot and cold, low HP, and he's second guessing himself at every turn. And that was the effect of the Solus, right? He was on the scanner, he could saw both of them on drones, or at least one of them on a gadget and one of them on a drone, and he knew that his time was now, and handy, he went for it. Here goes Bitterking, a player just around the corner, but oh. he knew exactly where he was, and he called that out to Souls, and he took down Forest. J9-0, you gotta land this kill, but he lands a double, one onto his teammates! It's disaster for SSG, as FaZe are cruising through their defenses once again. SSG slowly losing their grip here. I wouldn't expect that timeout to come pretty soon. That round was a little sloppy from them. Not having a drone upstairs in admin. Handy completely taking charge of that round. Jumping out the window, getting two for his troubles, getting back in. And then we saw how strong that pulse was. He gave the communication to Handy on the players that were outside. And he was able to see the player pushing through lobby, which Souls was able to take down sufficely. Phase. Winning the information game so far. Oh my god. That's a crazy replay, man. Oh my gosh. Handy, he just got the jump out of his life onto the two players out there. Yeah, and that painful, painful team kill as well. <laughs> There's so many shots of SSG fans in pain. <laughs> that right there is what it's like being an SSG fan. You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> Oh, more plot twists than Game of Thrones being an SSG <laughs> fan, that's for sure. It's been a good game so far between these two, but FaZe are off to a rolling start on the defense on Consulate. It means that they might be able to complete the round tours. They're going to take us over to Expo, and Piano is the third bomb site. And while they've really extended the map here, haven't they? They're pretty much holding on to all of the top floor. I, I believe they've got some players get getting ready for the basement as well for that entry. It's just so extensive from FaZe on the defense. Okay, never mind. I may have lied. There is no one on the basement actually, but extended all the way through the top floor. It's a very separated defense for FaZe. Almost like Kitchen on Skyscraper. This site is primarily held from up top because you can deny every single plant from above. FaZe Clan know that. SSG knows that. Can SSG disrupt the FaZe Clan top floor hold, which they weren't able to do on Skyscraper, leaving Vita King in a 1v4? Will we have a similar situation on this site? The info is coming out from Forest. Having a look in on the bomb site to see if they can make some headway in. The only player in the bomb site, of course, is KDS, all alone with the cap pan. But here goes Hot and Cold, down and through the basement. He's found his way into the building, but they, can they capitalize off it? 
Forrest using the Brava to completely clear all the information. So again, that hot and cold can creep into his sight or up the spiral stairs and find himself an advantage for that SSG so desperately needs. But there's going to be a barricade. Hopefully no one can hear that getting punched because that would give away hot and cold's element of surprise. Here we go, so who's Zulu? The bomb site is right next to him. It is over inside the piano and expo, and there is only one player on the bomb site. So if he is safe, he could land this kill. He's just seen KDS cross. Oh. The info is there for him inside the walking closet. Now the grenade will sail on through, but the shots will not connect. He's a hell in a cell. Can he claim one kill with him? Hot and cold's SSG fallen on pack. What is this from SSG? They've been red. Cyber's come to the aid, and Handy finds one. KDS still not dealt with as Space Station tried desperately to pick up the pieces. A kill perhaps, but nothing is found for Forrest except death at the hands of Cyber. Faults now. One versus five. It feels like so many times in this series have we seen SSG in this position. Deftly, he walks around these goo mines, desperately looking for something. A pre-fire through the wall, KDS is low HP, this should be an easy kill, but nothing is found once again. Another flawless round for FaZe, they're fourth in this series as they make three defenses in a row. We've seen different positions of entry from SSG, but FaZe again has the understanding of what the objective of the strat is. They're sending hot and cold to get a pick. The rest of the team's hitting one side. They know that's happening. FaZe has been so good at shutting that down, and especially getting rid of the utility that the Brava is hacking. You're not getting any utility out of that Brava besides the element of surprise, but hot and cold is not finding anybody. And actually, as the knock, FaZe is finding him more often than not. This is where I'm getting scared for SSG, right? FaZe, they clearly have the formula right now against the style that SSG are bringing. So, do, do SSG have the ability in them to adapt and overcome and change their tempo and change their pacing? Five player repick here on the attack. No more Nook in play. There is still the Brava in play, but the main thing here is it looks like it's going to be slow and steady from SSG. No more of that injection and then play around the orbit of hot and cold playstyle anymore. It's just break down the map. Absolutely. To put it bluntly, I hate to say this because I love the SSG guys, but they really need to take it slow to get the kill to get the kills to get in the map. J90 is the only one who has a kill on his team. Nobody else. Everybody is on a donut, and that's you just can't even play a map, play Rainbow Six without your team getting one to get into the map, especially on ta on attack. If you aren't able to find people with the amount of possible entryways that you can get onto consulate, then you need to change up the style of attacks that you're taking. And of course, the elephant in the room, tiptoeing around the map. Wow, what an impact trick. That is nice. This elephant is Cyber once again on this cav. The second time in the map. Bolt does successfully breach this wall with his exothermic, so there is a way in for SSG. That is Ami on the yellow door is so good at keeping players out. They have to walk up and put, punch it. It exposes them. Soul on the Azami is getting such good positioning and control, locking off everything that SSG just worked to open up off of the Thermites. But here is where SSG tries to bait their identity of their attack. Hot and cold opening up the hatches over by server, putting pressure on it, and it's going to force FaZe to have to move the Cavera all the way down to the exact same position where they were able to win the round on the last basement defense. SSG is shifting their focus. They've put the pressure on the bomb site and they're happy with it. But now they want to turn their attention to the rest of the map as well. They want full control. But here's Hot and Cold all alone and Cyber's on the other side. Oh, so no! Not again! He decides to allay the interrogation and go straight for the kill. But that knife in the back has been supplanted. And SSG once again find themselves flailing Desperately looking for a way back in. As FaZe look to consolidate their advantage, they will give nothing to SSG. <coughs> Floundering once again. Here comes the flank from Handy. He's got the information. He knows he doesn't have to move. Cyber continues to fight tooth and nail. Low HP, but Ashen's been taken down. Not out as of yet. Thanks to a nice C4. Handy is so ready to make this flank as well. 
The pinch was so good from FaZe Clan, able to get chip damage. While SSG tries to take above the site, SSG's gonna have to look for a play. But here's Cyber, full control, not much information oh, on him about no. a flank. Everybody! Oh no. It goes up again, but he's spotted! The Cav is down! I repeat, the Cav is down! And SSG, they've stolen this numbers advantage! If they find Handy here, the round would surely be done! But he's not finished yet, and Finiking! Once again, he's back in their face. Jano to trade back that kill off the site. Jano is in, but Finiking holds the site once again for FaZe. The SSG, they can get so close, but never can they get it across the line. Just when you think SSG is one step closer to getting a round back in this game, FaZe pull it back to themselves. SSG's gonna have to call out the timeout because they need some life-saving from their coach right now. This is such a tough spot for SSG. They've tried two formulas now, right? They've tried the SSG formula and the slower formula, the one where they dissect the map, take it slow, go step by step, and both of them haven't worked now. And not once, but twice, have they been dismantled by the Kavira of Cyber. I feel like that very much warrants this tactical timeout. And so what is Callout saying? What do the SSG guys need to hear in these moments? For FaZe, there's very little that needs to be said. They have the perfect read onto Space Station. They know exactly how to play this and force SSG to wander around this map into their traps, into the waiting arms of Cyber time and time again. Hot and cold, the same man to fall the prior round. Man, I feel bad that Kavera has been doing an immense amount of work onto SSG. The style that SSG is playing is they're not getting hard control of what exactly they want. They're trying to open up everything in hopes that it makes FaZe rotate and makes give them give up position, play the downstairs bomb site. But in turn, FaZe is not getting scared. They're not falling back. They're continuously playing in these positions without much help. Handy was by Spiral Stairs. Cyber was by the Broken Hall. There's no way to make those two players connect, but there's no drone, there's no Doku be called to find them out and root out those rats from SSG. Mission Control is confused by the way that SSG are <laughs> approaching this Five one. Four rounds down now. FaZe Clan running away with this one a little bit. They're gonna send us up to the top floor, which we actually haven't seen them play yet. I, I could be wrong about that, Sev. Am I wrong about I that? I'm not wrong. I believe they that. did, I... but the entire action went down on the ground floor when they oh, tried to hunt right. that player in that's Piano. Right. That was the Bombing that mate. was the Kavira interrogation yes. round. So we have seen this round being played out before. Uh, but this time FaZe are thinking, okay, the Kavira is not gonna work for a third time, is it? And instead they're just gonna lean into what is a pretty standard hold going inside the soda hallway. Shields being played there. We've got the patch of KDS. It's going to test SSG to see if they can make that clear work. On the other side, though, they do have the Flores on J90. So if they do make the sweep in through Admin Guide and actually back themselves into problem solve here, SSG could take it down. SSG is switching tones, bringing a lot more utility-based op, the Capitao, the Gridlock, and the Flores, like you mentioned, Mandy. Forced. He is going to be as aggressive as ever. He's on the Finca himself. Usually the man you see behind the support, he's going to be making the play that he, as the IGL, sees opening. The barbed wire is going to get cleared by the floor so that potentially a lurking SSG member can sneak up through the stairs and find an entry into the site. Nades rain down from below to potentially get bandit tricks off of the wall so that Fultz can then open up the wall to create more pressure up top. And I really want to focus on if Force will go up spiral stairs after he's used his utility. Will be a pivotal late round play, but for now, FaZe are sitting pretty behind their stack of utility. There it is from Forrest. He sits the king back down. And Ashen gets aggressive as well. The Rateros have cut down this vending machine position, and KDS is forced back. Under the safety of the Azamis, though, yes, KDS can at least get away with his life. And Cyber's down below. He's oh. looking for the hunt on to Forrest. But he takes him Activating down, beheaded down. by this player as he comes up through Spiral, looking for the second, but not before the trade comes through. There's Handy to claim one back, but man advantage still in the favor of SSG. Handy so difficultly able to clear out from behind these zombies, bobbing and weaving through SSG members, but he gets behind the Soto machine. Did they see him get into that position? This could be a pivotal position. Flashes oh. will come out. KDS gets one. Handy goes down. And with that, SSG has that advantage once again. 
Back into it, J90. He's coming for the backstab, but he can't land the him. shot. A stun grenade will force back that position, but there's another player lurking in the shadows. Both of these FaZe Clan members have been spotted. Oh, J90, he just can't land the critical shot. But this diffuser will be set down. And with that, SSG can safely retreat. It's now an attempt at a retake for FaZe. Souls finds the first. Two more to find, but Ashen's got the angle. Cool and calm. Up to KDS. One versus two. Separated are the two players from SSG, and they will give him nothing. They will allow him the space to go for the diffuser, but they will not give him a peek. The timer is ticking down. KDS, there are no second chances here. You need to stick it. And there's no chance that you can do it now. Bait all you like, you will not win this round. Ashen, time to fire up the engines. And SSG put themselves on the scoreboard. The first round of hopefully many to come for this team as they start their resurgence. That's the strongest SSG has looked this whole best of three series. Complete game plan in hand, exactly where they needed to be. The nades hitting. Finally, SSG able to get the advantage for once on this consulate map. <laughs> so I have to share with the rest of the class, Fox nearly fell off the stage. <laughs> nice to have a moment of uh, calamity and brevity in all of this. For Ashen though, we need to see him fire up like that again. Not just in the server, but out of it. Forrest had a miraculous round as well. And for SSG, holding on to these advantages, methodically working together, not seceding picks. That is the key to their success as we see the crowd get behind them. No surprise at this rate, in North America, there's only one team in this match that they will cheer for. And that's the question that I want to pose to SSG here. They have the winning formula now. They've proven to us in that last round that they can do it. They know how to play this methodical siege where they break down a round and they go for it. Are they going to keep repeating that? Or are they going to revert back to the SSG formula of old where they try and inject a player in? Or do they need to find a middle ground somewhere? FaZe has done a great job at shutting down SSG's sparky players. And it almost feels like FaZe has quieted the crowd. Atlanta! Are you still here? Yeah! Oh, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the North American crowd will get behind SSG and there is a real chance that they could make a comeback in this game if they win this round. A 2-4 half is not the end of the day on a consulate attack. SSG, they're having to think about a sweep in through the map. Fault is going to enable Hassan to get into admin off the back of the Gara hook, but is not going to meet anyone there on the other side. The rest of FaZe Clan, feeling a bit of that pressure, half fallen back and regressed in through the other half of the top floor. I love how Handy heard the Amaru and just instantly ran back because he knows <laughs> that they don't have to fight for admin control. They just have to hold projector, which is very difficult to get those players out of those hard positions. Uh, it's a troublesome clear now for SSG. Ooh, but here's a good bit of drone work from Jane. I know he's also spotted the mozzie. The temptation to send someone aggressive here. Handy does spot that drone eventually. Likely aware that he's been droned, but he gets very aggressive now and takes down faults. He will fall back for his trouble. Might be a trade here from SSG, but they made the wrong formula. And Cyber looks to take down Hot and Cold. It's devastating now for SSG. If they can't find this kill, Cyber still alive somehow, but he's C4 lands. Handy's found a second. And this half is looking to close for FaZe. Another C4 goes through. J90 sent into orbit as Forrest is the last one standing in the crossfire. He finds nothing. 5 1 half for FaZe. Spells doom for SSG. SSG had amazing positioning, but again, FaZe is not falling back without a fight. They're not scared of SSG. Handy going for an aggressive play. He's been so good for FaZe so far. He's been the standout player in this round. Obviously, the prior round that SSG was able to capture, it was off of the back of Force's opening nade kill. He wasn't able to catch anything off the nade. 
and the C4 right as he went down. The C4 able to catch SSG's entry player, completely stopping SSG in their tracks. I gotta say, for these phase plays, you have to admire how good their micro game and their tenacity is in their positions, right? It's very easy in, in that spot to then go and fall off, but you pointed out, Projector is one of those spots that for SSG on the attack is really hard to dislodge. So you've got players like Cyber and like players like Handy that are okay in the chaos because they can find the right timing to go for the swing. Like, yes, you might be getting droned out. Yes, you might be getting jiggle peek. But in the one crucial moment of vulnerability for the SSG player on the other side, that's when they take that high risk engagement and go for the one versus one. And it's just such masterful Rainbow Six from these two frontline players. It's very uncharacteristic of yeah, SSG to not have any other points of contact. It's very one-sided in the way they attack that round and in the way that they've been trying to group up to diminish FaZe from being able to get the opening picks. But with that being said, they aren't getting much position to get them into these difficult spots like Projector, like CEO. Well, 7-4 on map one. Phase now up four rounds in the lead going into the second half. On attack, they are phenomenal. The best attacking team in Atlanta at the moment. The Space Station will have to change that narrative. Ashen said it. We care not for the storylines. We don't care about the narrative. We're here to win. And we can beat anyone on our day. Obviously, SSG playing a lot of the verticality themselves. Very aggressive place from Force. Whenever SSG has their back against the wall, the confidence is what shines through. The individual playmaking is what shines through. We're going to need to see a lot of individuality out of SSG right now. And especially with how extended they are playing this strategy as well. There's not too many SSG players holding hands and playing side by side. So really, the onus is on them to win out these engagements. Cells is going to be kept at bay for a little bit longer with the Azami Barricade, and as a result, the rest of SSG are going to fall back a little bit, except for Forrest, who's going to hold on to his position just inside of Tellers. But there goes Ashen, taking down Handy for the first pick of the round. The roaming Solus makes his way back, but KDS lies in wait. With welcome arms, he claims Ashen's life. The hype man for SSG has gone down. He will need to guide them through this from the back line as FaZe have taken all kinds of map control in their favor. Absolutely, FaZe has taken so much map control off of the pick from Handy, off of KDS getting that trade, and now the Solus is down. So they don't have to worry too much about that verticality from above, calling the plant down. FaZe can sit comfortably off of the protection from the gridlocks, open up angles, and make SSG suffocate, step by step, constricting them like a python. Ooh. And FaZe are certainly starting to feel the pressure of the bomb site come to them as Hong Kong is going to get a trade back onto Bitter Kings, the oh. three on three. But KDS is going to make things worse. re -aggro for Forrest. He's taking a bunch of damage early in the round from failed aggression, but J90 gets his. Looking for another KDS on fire. Forrest up against two. Holding his angle, they do give him the one. But he doesn't land the shot. Repeak! Oh, Forrest! One more of those, please. Cyber will not give it away. FaZe Clan match points with five match points before them to close this game. And calamity for SSG. The round's so close to be in their grasp on the brink of success. FaZe Clan still it away from them. You called them a python, and they've really been sinking their fangs into this one. Six, one up, now for FaZe. So dominant going into this attacking half. Step by step, FaZe is one of the slower Brazilian teams. We always love to harp on it because they have the aggression and the talent on all of the players, but they only really send Cyber because that's all they need. The rest of the team can take their time setting up step by step the information, where they want to go getting those trades back, especially against a team like SSG, which, like we said earlier, they're very split up. They're going for these aggressive plays. They're trying to let their individual players shine. And if they're only getting one on the roam, even though it might feel like they're putting themselves in a good position, FaZe is still hey. using that time to take such control over the map. It's just a constant state of detriment for SSG. Everything they try seems to be snatched away from them. Like you've said, Fox, they can't be satisfied with a 3v3 moving into the late round because FaZe 
always miraculously seem to win those. The only word that comes to mind is desperate. As J90 looks for another spawn peak, SSG have failed on every attempt of those spawn peaks thus far. Oh, KD, yes. Nice shot over onto J90. Looking for that peek out onto the window, but not quite able to connect what he started. Ashen there is going to try and meet another player of FaZe Clan on the other side, but they're playing it cautiously now, having got that first pick. KDS doesn't want to give any more away. He's going to sail a nade on through to try and collect another one, but it doesn't quite connect. The space suit slowly running out of oxygen. SSG begging for dear life. Helping from assistance. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that we do. Five rounds in a row will be required for SSG. FaZe Clan, so patient, so incessant. They simply wait for SSG to make the first move, as SSG are so want to do. There goes Ashen though on the trade, back onto KDS, so claiming one oh. back and Fox as well is gonna double down for SSG. Reclaiming this control over up on the spiral stairs. It's hot and cold to make it for three onto Vita King. Another one desperate for Cyber, but he finds nothing. Hot and cold is woken up and handy. 11 kills in the map. The top fragger in the server with four players to find. Feels like just a few rounds ago, the roles were reversed and it was J90 in this position for SSG. Will he give it a go? He was in the exact position, taking the time to figure it out with his teammates, figure out what went wrong. But I think FaZe has been feeling pretty confident so far throughout the map. Handy, wanting to be challenged, wanting to be fought. He's been so good this whole tournament, round after round, game after game. The lifeblood for the FaZe <laughs> clan support. Look at this double stack. Up, this down, funky feet. down. <laughs> That's what I call it. The Ella shotgun too. That's. An ugly sight. Oh, it's gonna work. Handy's coming up the yellow stairs. Oh, Handy, you have no idea what you're about to meet. If by some miracle he finds both, this round is extremely winnable. Ashen is so close to swinging this as well. <laughs> One flash goes through. Both players turn away. And oh, yeah, Handy does the same. What's the push now, Handy? Now or never, and he looks to bait. He will fall back. He will not give them anything. Space Station, stand their ground. And Handy lets the timer seed to zero. SSG take their second round of Consulate. As difficult as this game seems to claw back, you have to start somewhere. And thankfully for SSG, thankfully for the SSG fans in the crowd, that's the first step to redemption. But oh, is it a difficult one. Yeah, a long path ahead for Space Station now. For FaZe, no reason to break a sweat, no reason to give SSG the satisfaction of that final kill. Vita King, he has certainly been the villain of North America's story in this major, but that's the role that he wants to play. And he will happily cruise that ticket all the way to a semi-final. Again, that last round being a 4v5 in favor of FaZe Clan. SSG continuously playing better when they're a man down. If they can just correct it to where they play as good as being at the disadvantage, these rounds would look a lot smoother and a lot cleaner for SSG. But is it really an SSG round without a little bit of chaos? <laughs> <laughs> That's their usual MO, isn't it? And they are going to take us into another attempt at the defense over on the Tellers and Archives bomb site. Similar philosophy as FaZe Clan, they are going to extend their hold through the map, both down into the basement and into the top floor as well, making a bit of a stronghold into break. But oh, he is hot and cold on a bit of a spawn peak. Oh, he needs this. It's such a narrow angle. He spots the player. Oh! Man down for FaZe. The spawn peak finally worked for SSG. They conjure some energy. Finally, in this match, here's the jump out for Forest. Another one for Space Station. They maintain control of the round as they search for a way back into the match. Oh, no! They have stopped. When will they just stop? J9-0, he tucks him in through a little sliver into the zombie barricade and Ashen's gonna make things even worse! You gotta respect
the confidence at SSG right now. All five players going for these aggressive plays, aggressive jump outs. Ashen spamming his keyboard a little bit. Uh, this is what the North American fans have been waiting for. Not just a win, but a dominant win. Something to fire up about. Space Station have got to give them something to cheer for. Vidiking in a 1v5. He had some miraculous plays on Skyscraper. But it's not going to happen here on Consulate. Marching into the crossfire. The final Brazilian is surely not long for this world. Aguma goes out into his pocket. Another one goes forward. But SSG have no intention of feeding him freebies. We talked about it time and time again. FaZe losing all of the rounds where they are the first pick. Cleaning up the round, bringing it into 6-3. And they need to continue with the same type of life. This kind of energy is what Space Station have been waiting for. Get in their faces, make it work. Find a flawless round. God damn, there's been a whole lot of them in this series so far. I believe four for FaZe and now two for Space Station. They're making this comeback dream a reality. Two rounds in a row, but a whole lot more still required to push into overtime. That's exactly right, Dev. They might have been able to do it twice, but they have to do it three more times to keep this one in the possibility of a victory, to keep them in the fight against FaZe Clan. They are going to send us down into the basement, looking for a roam over and through the second floor, but uh, I can only imagine it's going to be extended not too much further than that. J90 inside of Expo is going to be the core of the defense. Just having a look at the replays now, some crazy shots from the last round on SSG. I mean, this was so nice. Ashen, look, you can't do that to him. But he can, and he will. Finally, something to cheer about in North America. SSG need three more rounds like that to stave off defeat, to stay in the tournament. Look at this aggressive play from Ashen. On a cam right by the front door. Oh, he could make this work if he swings now, but Do they're it. watching. Do it. Are they watching? Another spawn peak! Cyber! Sent packing! A C4 finds nothing, but it doesn't matter. FaZe Clan fighting from a man deficit on attack. We know what that means. SSG now though, exuding confidence. That first pick untraded for FaZe Clan on the side of the attack. A little bit of pressure has gone out onto the bomb site, but SSG seem unfazed by it. SSG slowing down their de defense after getting the pick, maintaining a big part of map control, but maybe not seeing as many aggressive plays as we saw the round prior. Oh, there's temptation here though from Vidic King. He droned up and he saw that Hot and Cold was on cams. Now he's seen that Hot and Cold is back, watching avidly for anyone to enter from that garage breach and a second defender has gone to assist him. Here comes Handy. He is the man of the hour for FaZe. And he replies, a second could go. But it seemingly slips through his fingers. Forrest falls back, tail between his legs. As SSG look to try and hold on to some form of advantage. Still so much information for Vidiking on that site. And Souls has found Forrest, finished off what was left. Numbers advantage for the Brazilians. Soul. Soul slowly rotating to lock off the retakes from SSG. Slowly choking them like we've talked about. Trying to confirm this round for FaZe. This may be the first round that they win and they've been a man down this round. They could break the curse. And this is where it gets really dangerous now for SSG. FaZe Clan, they have the man advantage and they've slowed it down. They want to make sure that they measure Hang twice on. and cut once. But here goes Ashton on the back step onto KDS. This is what they needed. A little bit more spice. And Handy goes hunting once again. 12 kills so far, 3.0 KD. He is the killer for FaZe. But SSG will not lay down and let this happen. Souls spraying it through bullets their direction. Ashen in an awful position. But as long as he survives, oh, he goes outside, back in again, not detected. If he wins this fight, which he does, Surely SSG's Fitter King and Souls 
the 2v3. Vidiking locked out of the bomb site. He must make a desperate attempt now. Souls has been spotted, but Hot and Cold merely toys with him. It is all up to Souls. SSG lap up, they close the gap between them and FaZe Clan and they force FaZe Clan to take their tactical timeout. Just one round away from closing out the series they are, but it's slowly slipping away from them. SSG, they're getting fired up. They can feel the energy of Atlanta on their side. The next two rounds they need will have to come from a Aggressive plays out of SSG. The last prior two rounds have been aggressive plays that have gotten SSG the advantage and forced FaZe to get out of their comfort zone to adapt to what SSG is throwing at them. This is the SSG that we've been wanting to see. But two more rounds, they're going to need to be able to create the same type of magic that they've created the prior. While the dream is there, it's still so hard to imagine a comeback five rounds in a row. We've seen three. Two more seems dropped. like a big ask. FaZe Clan have been put back into their shells, but on the back of a timeout. There's no Romalio anymore to support them. It's Raffadel's time to shine. Their new coach. It's his job to lead them to a victory here with one round between them and a the semi-final. SSG running a similar type of setup that we saw on Skyscraper. Fultz on Solus. Been able to gather so much info. We saw Ash in last round gather a 3K, the rookie for his first main stage appearance. He's been playing phenomenally, but we talk so much about the extra players from SSG, and we need them to show up. This is where I'm scared for SSG. Are they going to be expecting Cyber on the Amaru, of all things, going into the potential final round? Ashen seems like he's ready for it. SMG living in hand, breaking open the window, looking for the spawn peak. Okay, that's brave from Ashen, and he thinks the better of it. He's going to fall off. But here's Cyber outside on CEO. SSG, are they ready for this? Do they have any idea what is about to hit them? The Amaru is going to need to find an interesting position to come through. Usually we see it go through connector on CEO side, but this is an admin style clear that FaZe is looking to take control of first. And we saw SSG do the same thing to FaZe, and they had a difficult time clearing projector, clearing CEO. Looks like FaZe are playing incredibly slow to suppress that SSG aggression. But is it all a ruse for FaZe Clan? Are they just putting this admin side pressure to take the attention away? It seems like SSG are calling their bluff. They've realized that FaZe Clan are pivoting around the roof. They're not staying in one place. They're not dedicating themselves to the sweep across the map. And SSG know they need to be ready for anything. They've spread themselves thin here on the defense, ready for any oh. eventuality. And another kill goes begging for FaZe. They're desperate for a player to cross their line of sight and start with an advantage. That's where they flourish. Vidiking is now finally boots in the building, but half the round is gone. The Amaru also looks to be sitting outside CEO window, waiting for a position, waiting for a play, waiting for his teammates to make the execute. And then he's gonna strike off of the surprise and the distraction from the rest of his team. But FaZe has to go through checkers and projector before they can get in connection with Cyber. They are dedicating themselves to this clear, though. They've got utility aplenty in their hands if they want to take down Hot and Cold. But he's holding strong with Shield on the other side. Flash down, Forest! What a run out! Souls is down, but Hot and Cold will surely fall in response. And FaZe Clan have evened the numbers. However, SSG still hold on. Cyber is waiting for his moment, holding this position. As KDS moves on through, he spots a player, but he cannot confirm that kill. Cyber's in the building! Oh, the double cannot come through! SSG maintain their composure, but not before Handy comes back for one. Two players for SSG remain, but have a look at this for faults. 
Information down below, that diffuser has been dropped as KDS goes hunting for it. Folds will have to hold on as J9O is taken out handy. KDS, 1v2, with it all to do. Can't even find the first, yes he will, but the diffuser must be planted. Guess who's below? A world champion waits to deny the plants. One more round for SSG. We highlighted the Solus early round and he came in prime and ready to deny the plant and also put pressure on the remaining FaZe members. And I hate to harp on this curse, but again, FaZe lost the first player to a forest jump out bathroom window. And that is another round that they have not been able to win after getting first pick and losing that advantage. FaZe might be able to start things out, but can they close them? Four rounds in a row now, I believe it is for SSG, gone begging against FaZe Clan. Step by step, SSG is clawing back in, bringing it to one round from overtime. The aggressive plays we said they needed, we questioned if it was possible round after round. And so far, our questions are slowly being answered round after round. I'm not sure who let the hyenas into the arena. But you can hear them louder than ever now. SSG have made this comeback. Four rounds of defense in a row. Aggression piled upon aggression. Finally finding that middle ground. And the tactical timeout for FaZe bought them nothing. The crowd slowly turning from a crowd into a galaxy as some of those torches line up. Y'all can't see it over on the stream, but we can see it here on the caster desk and SSG can see it from the stage as well. It's written in the stars. Well, if it is, SSG is gonna have to bring it to overtime to keep themselves in the game. They're gonna go to the piano bomb site, I believe, with the pulse in hand, getting them amazing information. The Solus as well. So much verticality and information being gathered right now. SSG has everything they need to attack this round head on. Ashton as well giving some info to his uh, remaining defenders as he sends the Yokai drone out through the roof. He can identify that there are no face clan players there just yet. It means their attention needs to be turned elsewhere. Pond Cold as well, double information for SSG. They really want to claim this first pick early onto Phase Clan, but it's actually KDS, the first one in the building. Time to some toes. The gridlock locking off Visa stairs. That's a good step, and the Amaru again going through potentially CEO window. It was so good last round, but he got turned on by J9O. The information's here for SSG. They know what's coming, but they don't know about the Amaru again. Do you expect it once? No. Do you expect it twice? I don't think so. Cyber will be the highlight player to watch as SSG gathers more information. Oh, Cyber's read though perfectly. Vinikin's gone down. can taste it you can hear it inside outside the server souls finds his first and a huge task ahead of phase clan an abundance of information still on the side of ssg stacking up on the top down setups with double shotguns on yellow they don't want to give a pick to phase they don't want to give him a leg back into this round phase as slow as ever, taking their time to find the opportunity to save them this 2-0. But time, time is not something that they have on their side at all. With only 30 seconds left and ticking away, surely this one will be converted to an SSG round. 25 seconds now for the two remaining players of FaZe Clan, and SSG know exactly where they are as the plan goes down. Handy to force it, Souls to cover with the C4. It's denied the plants. It's denied the rounds. There's no fucking way, Space Station. I'm going to overtime. And what a crazy closer that one was for SSG. They backed themselves with the info game. They denied the plant. They let Phase in, but they slaughtered them in the way. 
SSG has taken the driver's seat on this one, putting FaZe in the back seat, forcing them to bring something new to the table. FaZe has felt very confident this whole game, but going up such a massive lead and then slowly choking it away is one hell of a mount to bring it back. I tell you what, if you were in the crowd earlier today and you went home before SSG versus FaZe, shame on you! SSG have just won five rounds in a row! They've denied five match points from FaZe and they're looking to take it all the way! The crowd completely behind SSG here. Let's take one more look at that game-breaking round that brought it to overtime. Oh, no, we're back into the game. No looking back now for SSG. No dwelling on the issues of the past. They're back on their defense once again. We have had 10 rounds of defense and two rounds of attack, one on Consulate in this game. There is no doubt who this overtime favors. It's the team with that five round in a row momentum. It's SSG. I was going to point out that exact thing. We go to overtime and we have the reset for everything, but SSG will start out on the defense and oh, so successful they have oh. been. There goes Pulse, rounding the corner onto a player just outside the Visa stairs, but doesn't quite land those shots. In fact, none ring out. Cyber on the other side, playing the cautious game, not wanting to be taken out early. The overtime pressure not stopping SSG's early aggression, looking for these aggressive picks. Vita King, we talked about him last map, so good, but he's been struggling to find a footing here, especially for FaZe. He's been so good at those opening picks, but it's just been all handy all the time for FaZe. But right now, SSG has brought that momentum back, and each one of the players on SSG, their shots are hitting. All of their plays are working. On the other side of the soft wall of break, Forrest is in a bit of a vulnerable position. He could be wall banged, or he could be taken out by Cyber, who's starting to come in and creep his way in down below. Now gets control over in jungle. Faulty thinks he knows what's going on, though, making sure no one's going to come up the yellow stairs. Forrest, he's really going to be the one here to dislodge the attacker phase. Nades will come up, but it won't catch anybody. Forrest has politely backed up a little bit. He will be spotted, but I think he knows another nade is shortly coming after, so he's going to swiftly rotate back. Force phase to have to go through this execute onto the bomb site first. And this is really good from SSG. Forrest holding on there for so long is going to add another layer of droning now for FaZe. They need to now reconfirm that that's been cleared out. KDS taking a whole lot of damage on the other side of the engagement over on top stairs. But they still need to worry about this position inside of Soda Hallway. Handy's going to send in a couple flashbangs, but the swing is going to come through. Tom Cole on the other side to open up the first pick of overtime. This checker's soda position is so hard to clear. They tried to flash him out, but perfect timing from Hot and Cold to get his team the advantage. And the curse is in effect right now. You said it, Fox. FaZe cannot win a round. They cannot win a round when they don't find that opening pick on the attacking half. Space Station can cruise the rest of this one. No need to over-aggress, and they've got that read. They are composed. Fault's feeling the pressure, feeling the force, and Cyber opens it for FaZe. An opportunity waits, but Forrest is there for KDS. Waiting arms are SSG. FaZe Clan, Cyber, they're coming for you. Three more you'll need, but for Cyber, every kill is a marathon. Space Station for the first. SSG looking very comfortable now in this overtime. This is where the individual players thrive. Overtime make and breaks teams. And SSG so far have been able to consistently get the opening kill in the last five rounds. And it has no sign of stopping. FaZe need a life raft right now. They need Cyber, they need Vita King, they need somebody to get that opening on SSG to potentially stop that train but it doesn't look like anything's derailing Ashen just yet. But now they're on the attack. They've side swapped. Now, last time we saw SSG attack, it didn't go all too well. It was a 5-1 half for FaZe Clan, but FaZe Clan on their own attacking half struggled just as much. Are we going to see here that maybe just going the defense on the overtime is going to spell disaster for FaZe? Is this what SSG need to claim it back? Or with the momentum on their side, even going into their attack, are they going to be able to land this one? Momentum can carry a team through tournaments. 
And Faze are lacking the momentum just yet. They were playing the first start of defense with confidence in their hearts that they'd be able to go to the next stage 2-0 again without being contested by a team, let alone a North American team. But FaZe has thrown a wrench in their plans. FaZe has to bring a lot more, a lot more. And as you said, defense now for the Brazilians gives them a substantial advantage. And Space Station have to prove that their one attack round was not a fluke. They can repeat it. It will not be easy. Attack has been a massive challenge. FaZe Clan, if this goes to map three, there's no doubt about it. The pressure will be on their side of the fence. They will be the ones that must prove on Clubhouse that they deserve to be in a semi-final. But they face down their first map point against them in this series. Can they compose? The Amaru was struggling to find more than one against FaZe Clan, but now SSG is bringing the Amaru. They're bringing the Barava to be able to clear out the utility in front of them. Can hot and cold right the wrongs that FaZe were able to do on Amaru? Can he find more than one? Can he be the potential to send us to a map three? Here goes Ashen, up the visa stairs. Oh, oh no. straight into Projector! Taken down though, Cyber will take Ashen now, and that's the first pick going in the way, phase plan. Oh, Foltz has found his reply. Forrest to repel on inside, and he finds one as well. The trades come through thick and fast from FaZe as Forrest searches desperately for this final player in the top four. Foltz gets him. Vita King, since when were you here? Unaccounted for. Left to his own devices. Still on this top floor. FaZe Clan, a numbers deficit. But SSG, they have absolutely no clue. Vita King finds him, silences him, silences the crowd and gets away with his life. A whole minute to work with as Forrest grabs that diffuser back again. The round still in the hands of SSG. Fate is still in their hands for what is potentially the one attack that they need to land. Jaina no. And Forrest are gonna double down in orbit of the bomb site now. They just need to translate it down one floor and they're gonna send a bit of utility and Forrest is gonna get the plant down. Oh, a denial from KDS. It misses, no C4 to speak of. King to find forests. He was left unaccounted for, and now he might be able to bring this back for FaZe. KDS making his way up. Vita King there as well. J9. Oh no! It's FaZe with the SSG will give them hell. A roaring crowd deserves map number three. What a game. SSG backs against the wall, and they have every answer when the time, when the push comes to shove. Of course, the team that works out the most is able to push it to their limits <laughs> and bring it to a map three. And what a comeback from SSG when they were just on the brink of defeat, from the brink of being eliminated from the tournament. They are called upon, and they close it out. You can see on their faces utter disbelief Seven rounds in a row for Space Station. FaZe Clan, how do you come back from such a deficit? How do you come back into a game after losing seven rounds in a row? That's a question none of us are qualified to answer, so we'll toss it back to Jackie on the desk. Thank you so much for our wonderful casters. I <laughs> don't have words. Uh, I, I'm speechless right now. Do you all want SSG to win? <laughs> I can't hear you! Listen, I think this crowd, this, is it. this, this group, yes, is the, the reason why SSG was pushing through those matches, those rounds, everything yeah. as a whole. Undoubtedly one of the loudest <laughs> crowds I have ever experienced. <laughs> louder than SI, louder than so many tournaments Truly. before this. This has been an insane crowd. Oh. Yeah, literally that last play, I just looked at you <laughs> and I can't say out loud what I actually said to you, but I just could not believe it. I was in disbelief. I don't even know where to start. I mean, honestly, Waxine, you've repeatedly said they need to get out of their head. They yeah. just need to play. Oh my goodness, did they just play? I mean, I wish we had the comms so we could have heard whatever oh. Callout said, whatever Fold said, whatever any of them could have said, where it was just, you know what? 
It's not working. Let's just play. Let's just communicate with each other. Let's play the game of Siege. Actually, I'll tell you what they said. They said, boys, we gotta let them hang. And goddamn, <laughs> did they? No, I know what they said. We gotta crank! <laughs> That's what they said. They absolutely popped off. And it wasn't just raw aggression, right? At the, mm -hmm. at the start, maybe. They w switched to defense. There's non-stop spawn peaks, non-stop runouts. But then, as we saw the attack time be called, as we saw rounds tick on and on, FaZe Clan, they got smarter. SSG did too. Space Station started moving off aggression. Yeah, they would look for every opportunity to make that play. They'd always be looking for that jump out, but they'd only take it when they really knew they had that opportunity. They always ran the Solus. They had the, the Echo Camp giving them intel. They had the Pulse. Whatever it was, Space Station Gaming were making these aggressive moves off of the intel, and it's just so incredible to watch at this level. I have never seen FaZe look so scared in their lives. You saw the immediate so change quiet. of pace after the two rounds that SSG started winning. You see them on the map, not moving. They would lose someone, and every person was dispersed around the map, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to play, and SSG constantly was coming with that aggression and confidence. Jesse, um, you brought up that tactical timeout. Mm -hmm. It did seem like FaZe was trying to slow things down. Why didn't it work? I mean, I think against a team like Space Station, it's just so difficult, right? And I also feel like while they were doing the right thing, right? When you see hyper aggression, what you need to do is you need to just let them swing into you, hold your long angles, wait for their opportunity, you're gonna get picks. But it felt like no matter what happened, the swing would come up from Space Station, and then FaZe just don't shoot back. They don't catch those swings. Always Space Station were immediately locking onto the head, and FaZe Clan, they just felt a little loose. I mean, I don't even wanna say they weren't shooting back. Every player on SSG was playing with complete and utter confidence. You could yeah. see it whenever the viewer, I mean, whenever the, oh my God, I can't even talk, the top down, <laughs> the people, the spectators, geez, I can't even talk. When the spectators were spectating the SSG players, all of them, you could see, they didn't care who was in front of them, who that gunfight was gonna be taken with. They took it every single time and won it. One of my favorite cheers was, we want Clubhouse. Like this, <laughs> this whole auditorium was just ringing with that chant. Do y'all want Clubhouse? Hey, I heard someone saying that they wanted to go home. We're going to Clubhouse. <laughs> We're going to Clubhouse. We'll be right back. Quick break, quick break. Hello, I'm Dominique Clément, game designer on Rainbow Six Siege. The next season is right around the corner. And if you don't get the latest operator on release, you might still want to review your ABCs on some of the operators already available today in the game. The Electric Bandit, the Wise Cade, and the Quiet Mute will be welcoming a new troublemaker into their ranks, ready to give breachers a few headaches. Working out your pulse and solace muscles will ensure you'll be able to provide invaluable intel to this new operator. And let's not forget about Ella, Fenrir, and our other trap operators who each bring a unique ingredient that can be used in crafting some really crazy strategies with this new operator. So jump into the game and review your basics with these operators so you'll be ready to synergize with the new operator when it comes out next season. See you then. Yes, G2 have had a win. They have also had a loss. And of course, I think G2 is the best team in the world. And now it's up to us to defend that, to prove everyone that we're right. When I'm in a tournament, I, I don't care about the nationality of the enemies. I play every game like it's the same game. Good luck, guys. There's a lot of up and downs, but with this new MAD roster, I believe we can create something. Life is just a, it's a constant growth. It's mostly just kind of knowing yourself and not being afraid to just pick on yourself and get better. There's nothing better than seeing your top players pop off and your top players perform. That's where the magic really happens. I think that M8 is one of those teams that we will really struggle against because they understand things the same way we do and they have equally as talented players. We don't really have a rival. The only rival is ourselves, so as long as we get over that, there's no one in Norway. Hey guys, this is Gio from Sonics, and welcome to my fresh install. For diffuser, I have manual, because uh, I play support, so I gotta make sure I have the bomb at all times or I'm able to drop it inside the site. For drone prep, also manual. You also wanna sit on your entries drones as long as possible, especially if they're up. HUD, I actually just keep everything the same. Doesn't really change much. 
audio, everything on super high. I play night mode, surprisingly. I don't know, a lot of people don't play like that, but I like it. Basically for display, we go to as many hertz as you can. We go to 4.3, but that's all preference. I like 4.384 for me. 4.384, and then uh, at the bottom, I personally do 95 HUD display area and then 94 menu display area with a brightness of 61, I think it was. Some odd number like that. Graphics, I have a pretty bad PC at home, so everything's on super low. We go low, we go LOD quality high, shading quality low, shadow quality. I'm pretty sure that's very high as you, so you can see the shadows when they peak you. Uh, reflection quality low, VFX low, ambient occlusion low, anti-aliasing off. That's basically it for graphics. Make sure you always press apply so you have your settings saved. Control is the important part. I would say raw input off, mouse inversion obviously disabled, then sense is obviously up to you, but I play. 10, 10, 400. You can mess with uh, the magnification, obviously. I play with, let me see if it lets me. Thing, 1X is 28, 1X 28, 1.5, 56, and then 57. Uh, mouse scroll wheel, I have it off because I grip the mouse kind of weird. Gadget deployment, advanced, joint deployment, advanced. I think those are really important to have on. Uh, aim, on hold, lean, actually on hold as well because I lean with my mouse buttons. Sprint, hold, crouch, toggle, prone toggle, and then walk, toggle. For the keybinds, I actually have some kind of crazy keybinds. I lean with my mouse buttons. So this would be just have the mouse buttons. And then I, gadget is Q and E is melee. So that's kind of it. For control is my prone. And then it's basically it. Everything else is kind of default. Just make sure you're leaning with your mouse buttons and then your gadget is Q and your melee is E. So it's kind of weird, but I mean, it's all preference. Accessibility for optic colors. Yeah, I like the light green with a 100 opacity. I'm kind of blind, so I mean, I'm blind and old, so it makes me see better. At least, now that's what I think could be placebo, but it's all preference. Everything default and then opacity 100. I tried 50 or lower, but I mean, can't really see. So up to you, really. And just make sure you're applying all your settings. Thanks for watching my fresh install and see you guys at the major. I had to sacrifice a lot in my life to be, to be where I am right now. Everyone shares the same ideology or mindset. G2 is the best team in the world, period. The mentality when we just like focus our minds to win is just maybe the most important thing. What's most important is the journey that we go on, and we go on that together. The feeling of belonging is extremely important. I do think that I feel that the most. Having the crowd is uh, really, really amazing. When, when you do this and the crowd is like screaming because you just like put your hands up. You always have the crowd on your side because like we're the biggest team in the world. When you experience the adrenaline to play in tournaments, to win tournaments, you can't live without that anymore. I'm a guy who likes video games. But other than that, I don't have that much to define myself. I'm trying to find that. That's my next step in life. Find myself. Jackie? What do you I know? Are y'all excited? I 
Crowd. I absolutely love them. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous though. Map two attacks for both teams, a little shaky yeah, at I times, mean, gentlemen. You look at FaZe, they're the best attacking team here, right? Yes. <laughs> but then you look Are at that last know? game, you would question that. Uh-huh. And then you look at SSG, I mean, their attacks weren't strong either. Both teams, their defending side is what really carried them through that map. True. The best thing about this being a best of three, best thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is the fact <laughs> you can reset. You're going into this last map. You won your respective map. Sure, SSG had the huge bounce back, but S I mean, FaZe is no team to slouch on. No. They're a hard fighting team. They know how to hit that reset. I mean, I expect to see both teams really putting in the big foot forward, closing this game out the best that they can. I don't expect anyone to flop over. I don't want to see anyone flop over. None of us want to see anyone flop over. But again, it's a huge reset for both teams. Yeah, both teams really ran away on their defense, right? You can't ignore that fact. Defense is a little bit easier to play when you're nervous, when the stakes are the highest. Because you don't have to be the ones going to your opponents. You don't have to be making those moves. You can really be responsive. Um, I do think that for Space Station going into this map, they got the choice of the first side. They decided they wanted to start on defense. They said, great, Space Station will get the first six rounds on defense. Then FaZe got to decide what they started on overtime. FaZe chose to start attack. So that speaks to me that FaZe Clan know they're the best attacking team. They are trying to write off that last map. They say, we don't care. It doesn't matter. Who cares? We know we are the best attacking team in this tournament. We want as many attacking rounds as we can possibly get. And so for FaZe Clan, it's all about, can you reset? Can you get out of your own head? Can you get this crowd out of your head? And can you go back to the basics where your attacks used to shine so, so well? Okay, I want to talk about Map 3 Clubhouse on paper for both these teams. Kind of even? Yeah, I would say so. For yeah. Space Station, a 4 and one record in Stage 2 with three plays in Atlanta, those being an 8-7 win over Bliss, 7-3 loss to W7M, and then finally a 7-5 victory over Scars. For FaZe Clan, five-game win streak through SI and Stage 1, shattered, however, by Black Dragons in Stage 2, where FaZe fell, however, it was a 7-5, and they haven't played it since. Yeah, I mean, both teams very familiar with this map. This map has been in here forever. Consulate being a rework, brand new map. There's a little, you know, few things you need to figure out, work into it, but Clubhouse is pretty default. It's pretty P's and Q's going to the ones, twos, threes, trying to figure out what you got to do. I think what's really going to set this game apart is who's going to set that pace. Who's going to start off with the guns running, shooting, firing on all cylinders. And if you aren't that team, you're going to fall behind. Gabe, that was so composed earlier. Like, I'm throwing all my notes out. I'm throwing my notes <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I think we all, I mean, maybe not to you, Crowd, I won't speak for you guys, but for ourselves here, I mean, yeah. it was looking pretty one-sided throughout that entire game. For and I was sure. like, all right, we're going home early. And then you just saw one. Then you saw two. <laughs> then you saw three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Boom, SSG, we're going third map. So, I mean, yeah, I did throw all my notes out. I was like, all right, well, this we is what it's going to be. Let's just see SSG. We shall see how map three plays out. I'm so excited for this one. Dev, Mandy, Fox, take it away. Map three. Thanks so much, Jackie. I'm excited. You're excited. You're excited. Everyone here in the arena is excited for Space Station, pushing it to map number three. But FaZe Clan, they've been here before. They fought hard at events where the crowd has been against them. Remember the Berlin Major. FaZe were the favorites and Rogue took them down. Here, Space Station, on the back of seven rounds in a row, a comeback for the ages. I'm gonna ask you, Fox, can they do it? Absolutely, they can do it. We talked about it on the desk. It is a very even map for both the teams, but the only favor that one team has is SSG has the crowd behind them. There's no doubt about where the favor lies in the crowd, even on the socials. Space Station edge out ahead. FaZe Clan are the number two ranked team in the world. But it's time to settle who's better in the server right now. North America's last hope versus FaZe Clan. Six years these teams have faced off each other but never against elimination, never for a spot in a semi-final. The last time that Space Station made it past quarters, they won the whole damn tournament. But that was three and a half years ago, and just two years ago, FaZe Clan were champions in Yavle. That door closes if they are eliminated by SSG here. Capital band for Facebook.
fans are flying by us a little bit, and with Maverick and Capital being taken out, it does mean that we've got all of our, well, the rest of our hard breach and the anti uh, anti wall denial in the hands of the attack as well for FaZe, but Capital, for me, has been the most curious ban out of the lot so far. You can accomplish a lot off the back of Capitao, especially on every site. Obviously, you can fire out the rafters on Workshop, but when it comes to Master and Basement, you can use the fires and smokes to cut off very difficult positions like the bathroom that a lot of players play on, on Master, or like the back Workshop back Armory spot, B3, where a lot of players like to play on defense. So the Capitao ban, you can accomplish a lot. I'm not surprised to see that taken off the board. From a non-analytical, light-hearted perspective, I think it's ironic that the Brazilians have banned out one of the only Brazilian operators. There's plenty still to go. Maybe we'll see another Caveira. Who even is Vita King? Well, he was dominating on map number one. Let's see if he can reprise in map three. For the fans at home, before the game started, we actually saw Ashen in the chat <laughs> pestering Vita King, pretty much saying, who are you, Vita King? Are you going to show up? Are you there? Are you a garfish? Which is the fish on his monitor. <laughs> so they were spamming back, and FaZe didn't really have any response. They didn't speak back. They are locked into this game. But obviously, that goes to show you how confident SSG is going into this third map. I'll be honest. I saw the FaZe players backstage during their quick break, and there were a lot of glum faces. FaZe looks stressed. After losing seven rounds in a row, after fumbling five match points, can you blame them? FaZe are on the ropes, there's no doubt about it. Even for SSG, when they were going for their short break, I saw them as well, and it's not the character that you see on stage right now. It was pure focus, intensity, straight, expressionless faces. I mean, when you think about the FaZe plan of Berlin, the, the phase clan that was one round away from taking the trophy in Berlin away from Rogue now, Koi. What a lot of the players were saying, especially a lot of the Brazilian players, they admired so much uh, how much they were able to persist through the mental game. But that was the phase clan of old. This new phase clan roster, well, the merger of the old phase clan roster with the new Furia roster, do they have that experience? And do they have the tenacity in the mental game to keep on going and keep on pressing the attack and keep themselves in it? And one boost that FaZe in Atlanta do not have on their size that they did in Berlin is all of the other eliminated Brazilian teams. In Berlin, they all sat up in the rafters to watch the grand final. And while the European crowd was dominant, while the European crowd was loud, hundreds of thousands of people cheering for Rogue, a small group of about 20 Brazilians almost were as loud as the entire rest of the theater. And FaZe have themselves admitted that that was something that helped boost them on. If you're a Brazilian fan, well, you're probably watching the Brazilian Portuguese language stream. But if you happen to be watching the English stream right now, FaZe Clan will be waiting to hear your voice as SSG have the boost from the crowd here in Atlanta. FaZe Clan didn't let the crowd get to them in map two, but once you go down five match points, it's very difficult to stand up with confidence, with courage, and not feel a little bit of embarrassment that you've made it to map three against the home advantage team. SSG starting out on the defense. Now we have spoken a lot about the sides on this particular series that has been rather defense sided between both maps, Skyscraper and Consulate, but will be the same on Clubhouse. This map plays out very differently between the last two that we've seen. Going down to the basement for SSG, but that's not where the defense will reside. A lot of the players starting out on a very extended roam through all three floors of the map. SSG is notorious for roaming on this map, especially stalling out on drones. Their roam is commonly known as the SSG roam. Obviously, it was way back in 2022, when obviously they won invite themselves. Some similar characteristics, but the players are different in themselves. Well, Ashen, one of those new players, is shut down very early by KDS. He overstayed his welcome in that top floor. Very ambitious, solo roaming. Faults nowhere to support him. Jane, I know, tempted to make a run out happen, but he falls on back. I believe with that, the majority of Space Station has retreated back to that basement 
Bombsite, where is Fultz? Yeah, he has also retreated on back. So Space Station forfeiting the entire map now, despite being a player down, and will have to fight from behind. And off the back of the first pick for FaceTime, they really have hit go into the map. Cyber's come alive onto the Bark, and through the mid round, it's him and Handy, the two players uh, with vertical potential that we'll have to watch out for. No C4s on the other side of SSG, so vertical pressure, whether FaceTime kind of know it or not, is actually pretty safe in their hands at the moment. I think Vita King definitely knows about it because he's sent his way straight on through to try and open the kitchen hatch. Here's the impact trick to try and stop the Thermite from getting the hatch, but it won't be successful. Even though Ashen went down early, there's 40 seconds and FaZe Clan have so many positions that they need to get a hold of, so many positions wow. that they need to drone SSG out of before they enter the site. Attackers recovered the what is the move here for FaZe? Hopefully an opening pick, a 5v3 advantage would mean everything. There's only 30 seconds to go. They must have roughed onto the side. Faults forced out of his position. The picks come through for SSG. As they all fall one by one. Forrest, the last one to fall as J9O's put in the dirt phase. A flying star to flawless round. And Clubhouse is looking great for them on the attack. We saw the last map, how aggressive SSG was. And first round on the defense, the favorable side on Clubhouse. SSG, slow, playing back into the site, especially after losing Ashen, there wasn't really many teammates or many options to come assist Ashen. They fall back down on the site. They play off the time, which is an okay, okay thing to do. But FaZe is obviously very good on attack. They struggled last map, but they're not letting that affect them or get in their head into Clubhouse. And I'd like to see SSG, you know, they tested the waters last round. They did a little bit of a bait roam to fall back after Ashen went down. I'd love to see them turn the jet back, the jets back on, which was able to carry them through the comeback last map. I actually totally agree with that. I feel like Phase Clan, they are an execute team. When it comes to the late game, they are in the five on five or four on five. That kind of situation is where Phase Clan thrive, especially with their measure twice, cut once approach going into every single stage of the map. Five seconds to go. SSG, they're going to change up their bomb site, having lost out in the basement. They think the better of it and are going to go over to CCTV to and cash instead. It does look like they are extending out a little bit. Uh, J90 and Faults are going to extend their way over into the master side of the map, aided by those Azami Kiva barriers. Faults is going to use those spontaneously a little bit later in the round to make sure that his fall off route is safe. SSG can't let FaZe get comfortable ready to execute. They need to take the fights to them. Because as we've spoken time and time again, we know that FaZe have a much difficult, much harder time attacking or pushing into the site. Man, Banditrick will come out, it'll get the Thermite, but the Ace on the other side will open up the wall and start phases an onset onto the site. Nice minigame being played so far from Phase Clan on the attacking half. They've done step one, but can they do the rest? Through the mid-round now we go, oh, it's a bit of nice info there from Ashen, able to jump the drone out through the drone hole all the way over in Jacuzzi. But what have Phase Clan achieved so far? Having opened the breach now, Hot and Cold is locked a little bit in his position. He is protected by the Keeper Barricade for a while. But it does seem like FaZe Clan are going to shift their focus over towards Garage. And here's where that Capital ban, that FaZe banned out. It would have been perfect for taking Garage and starting to execute onto Hot and Cold, who's the player up there. It looks like they want to continue going through, through Garage, but it's going to be so difficult without having the flames. It's going to take a lot more of a step-by-step -step process off of the utility first. Selma attempts to clear the position. Hot and Cold goes for a jump over, but it is spotted and taken down. Souls punishes Faults as well. And FaZe do have their two-player advantage they were looking for. Very explosive take. Below the retake into server. They need to get a pick back first to be able to have that advantage, have that downstairs control. Oh. And there it is. J9 has started off. Ashen's found one as well. He's gone down, but not out as of yet. However, the player on the balcony has been eliminated for phase, and so SSG have a real shot of making this work. But here goes KDS onto Ashen, but it's Forrest on the other side with a lineup. Phase, they can't enter in just yet. They need to make sure they're safe before they make their way in onto the bomb site. And it's handy to make sure that no one's flanking down from below. They really don't want Forrest to land the C4. Oh, Cyber's finished off Forrest. That C4 is gone. 
And with the reinforcement, J90 will have a very difficult task of denying this plan. It seems impossible. Oh! A double kill is not enough for J90. And the 1v1 is closed out by Handy. FaZe Clan, two attacks in a row on Clubhouse. We talked about how good they were at executing. We said it was going to be a step-by-step -step process to clear out the rafters before step one even happened. Hot and cold swung over the balcony <laughs> in attempt to grasp one kill before he was taken out. And the flank from below wasn't able to find anybody else while Souls was able to shut down the rotate from the assisting SSG member. And this is the second time where SSG has allowed FaZe to set up and attempt to execute step by step. If you're SSG, you have to realize that's not how we won Consulate. That's not how we're going to win Clubhouse. The formula that SSG had, especially by the end of it onto Consulate, was being okay with going for these risky plays, being okay with looking for the entry denial as it came through. It was Ashen that really lit the spark with his 2K back on Consulate over on defense when he claimed the entry kills. And now yeah, they need to flat. find that spark again. And so they will move to a new bomb site. Five Jim and Bedroom, after failing on the basement and failing on cash CCTV, they try a third bomb site. Once bomb. again, an incredibly aggressive roam from SSG. But FaZe have had their number. They've had this read. SSG is going to have to be able to take it to him. And the operator lineup that they're running is to protect the bandit, the castle, the Azami, the mute. It's to stall enough time on all the walls so that force can rotate to each individual wall. Server, connector, hot tub. Deny the openings from FaZe, which will allow FaZe to then execute and set up their execute. So they're attacking the attack head on, dealing with the first set of problems, which is the walls. I like this from SSG. They are willing to play the mini game with the trick on the other side, so here it starts now. Once again, the bandit trick onto the Selmas oh, no and way. Oh my chance. Forrest, he's gonna be able to get both! Oh. Impeccable timing from Forrest on the mini game. There are moments in Rainbow Six that we cheer for incredible fragging ability, and there are moments when players step up for their team with their brains and their mechanics, and that was what Forrest did just there. He denied two exothermics and one Selma. The fact that he got both exothermics, now leaving only one ace, oh. that just gets removed once the Thatcher wears off. It leaves FaZe in such a difficult spot trying to go through the hot tub, especially with the breach being the on the unfavorable side, which is the left side, which exposes you to the main hall that SSG has in a zombie and two players standing behind, waiting for what FaZe is going to come through with next. FaZe Clan, they've squandered their utility over on the wall, but not their guns just yet. Still five players alive. But the branches on the decision tree are starting to close. Hot and cold, he takes a little bit of damage, but not out just yet. Here goes Ashen on a peek through the garage, but there's a player on the roof, KDS. Does he know what's going on? This could be a fickle affair for Ashen. SSG do not need to give up the numbers. They have a favorable position thanks to that wall denial mini game earlier, thanks to Forest's heroics. But have a look at this. Cyber lurking down below. Faults waiting to receive. Oh, but there's information. The shots don't land. But there's information now for Faults. He knows he's been hunted and he can fall back down the kitchen hatch. Time is ticking away. Tough spot now for FaZe Clan. The wind conditions of the round have closed and it's all SSG's round to lose and Ashen's gonna open up the great equation. Oh no, Faults, your teammate's shooting you handy. In a difficult position as Vidiking has jumped on inside, found one, traded back. Souls 1v3. He knows where one player is, just hanging around the weights machine. J90 is in a good crossfire, hot and cold, finishes it with the Deagle. And SSG finally claimed their first round on club. We talked about SSG having to take a two phase, and that's exactly what they did on that gym bomb site. They brought the bandit to counter with literally the first step that phase <laughs> <laughs> that phase is gonna have to accomplish, which is opening up the site, which phase has been doing an amazing job. Beautiful bandit trick by force. It set the rest of the team up. There was really no entry for FaZe to be able to walk in. Obviously, the only X factor being Cyber on the buck below. He wasn't able to get Fultz. Fultz 
running all the way back to site because he knows that if he doesn't give that pick away, you still have the advantage. FaZe has to struggle to find their way into site and struggled they did. Really liking the approach from SSG. They know that FaZe, they play this methodical game and they know the science behind the Rainbow Six, but well, the space station was made for science and they can meet that on the other side. Oh, so eloquent, Mandy. SSG, determining the pace of these rounds, as you've said, Fox. And just forcing FaZe to make fatal errors. They can transpose that into a few more defenses. This half will be looking pretty. But starting with two attacks in a row for FaZe is not where SSG want to be, so they need to make up for their slow start on Clubhouse. Absolutely, Clubhouse is one of the more defender-sided maps, but you never judge a team based off their defenses, you judge them off their attacks. But if you can go on to attack with a 4-2 lead, oh, you are feeling very comfortable, because you can almost argue that you will have a much easier time attacking on CC, attacking on Jim. So SSG did the hard part. They won their Jim. Now they just have to win the other two sites that are arguably a lot easier. They know what they need to correct. But can they put in the game? Will FaZe bring something to the table that we haven't seen prior? Will FaZe try to go for the picks instead of the executes? FaZe are starting to deconstruct this top floor as Hanny's made a breach over on Kennel's wall, but Ashen's there to meet them on the other side. Just over on Rafters 90, is in a bit of a vulnerable position to that breach that has just gone down. He sends out the solar scanner to make sure that there, there's Ooh. still no info on him. KDS, he feels like something's going on on the outside of the building, but it's actually false to find the first onto Cyber. And now SSG know, after the aggression that they have engaged, that they can continue to time and time again. Ashen, a double kill to pad his stats, to bring SSG back in a substantial advantage. Three players in advance of phase. Vita King looking desperate. Map one, he was the MVP. But that was a long time ago now, nearly two hours. And map three is where this will all stick or die. Soul's getting desperate, he has been trapped. And so he has nowhere to go but onwards. FaZe Clan gonna try to find some type of an advantage, but Ashen still up top. An amazing job from the Solus to be able to deny all the information. FaZe Clan. One chance to make something happen starts on this blue. Ooh, Ashen just missed his chance. Souls baits out the peak. Forrest falls victim. But so does Vita King dropping down the hatch. And here comes Ashen. He's back. Back again for SSG. And the score's even once again. And it's Ashen once again. It was over on Consulate that he lit the spark for SSG and it's on Clubhouse that he does the exact same thing. Give him the solace, man. He deserves this oh, operator. Yeah. He deserves the P90 in his hands because he can spray down that entire magazine and he claims so many kills to his name. It was three, I believe it was in the round four, Ashen on the solace. And for Ashen, 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 as the crowd Ashen, starts to call Ashen, his name, he is showing none of the weaknesses that you would expect from a rookie first time on the stage. Fuck, do you remember the first time you played on stage in front of a crowd? Yeah, absolutely. It was Cologne, Germany, and we played against uh, Prime Penta, and I dropped two kills. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can speak from experience what it's like to play as a rookie in front of a stage against one of the greats of Rainbow Six. It's not easy, and yet Ashen is still showing up like this. It's extremely daunting, but obviously something that Ashen has that I don't is just natural aiming talent. He's been so good for so long. The confidence to make plays like this is only given to him by his teammates. You're as strong as your weakest link, and there are no weak links right now against SSG the confidence to be able to play in the rafters as the Solus, knowingly, confidently, not spotting a single drone. He knows he's safe up there. He makes one of the round winning plays, able to shut down three and still maintain garage position, not allowing that comeback. He doesn't give the kill back. It was a pitch perfect round for Mash. I very much like the approach from SSG. They've realized that FaZe Clan, they put all their eggs in the early game basket, right? They, they really want at least either Cyber or most of the time, Cyber Billy or KDS, to find that entry pick to unlock the round for them. 
And SSG know that now, and they've met that with their own aggression and with their own relentless, relentlessness on denying that entry from happening. Well, we're back into the game now after a very brief technical timeout. The fist pumps come through once again, and SSG is looking as bomb. happy as ever. During this major, SSG have been real BO3 besties. They struggled at the start of Swiss. They lost their first two matches. They went down into that lower bracket. Three best of three wins in a row. What's a few more? The longer the tournament goes on, the more SSG has been looking in form, especially with the confidence Five as it builds in such a newer team off the back of Ash, and he's been so good. The rest of his team playing off of his plays, making them cohesive rounds. Face Clan struggling to find that opening, and I love to see the reads from SSG where they're able to completely understand, hey, the first two rounds, we gotta give our props to FaZe. Their executes have been phenomenal. We can't let them execute. And now, the past two rounds, they've completely changed in the way that they want their start. Just like you said, FaZe has the eggs in the basket. SSG is trying to stomp on that basket before it hatches. A little bit of work done here from Souls. He's finally hacked that camera, but guess who was hiding below the whole time? It's Foltz. Bit of damage, but he realizes the priority of getting out safely. He will not cross any line of sight that could meet his demise. Meanwhile, Souls, I believe, has now lost his Brava drone. SSG on this bar defense have a lot of map control still in their favor as FaZe slowly but surely start to pick apart this defense. FaZe, and they have lost a little bit of that live droning potential. There was like four drones that were in the building at once, but no entry to follow from it just yet. I don't even believe that Cyber is in the building himself. But now that the drones have sailed on through, everyone has gotten off it, and they're going to enter into the building together. The beauty of this bar defense from SSG is they have the Solus below who's able to call out the plant. We saw SSG go to the site once in their prior Phase 2 matches, and they won it off the Foltz, specifically gathering information off of the Solus. Wow. The Solus has been so strong for SSG so far. Have a look at this. It's the Solus himself getting aggressive once again. As the breach onto the bomb site has been enabled, Ashen has retaken this position inside of construction, and he has the ability to deny that plant. This is really good from SSG. They know that they cannot let FaZe into the late round. There's absolutely no way in the world that they're going to allow them that win condition. And wow. so as the mid round is dialing on, they want to continue to meet them at their doorstep. This is a really good drone though from Souls. He's just seen the site being completely empty. And now that stock control is in the hands of FaZe, they can have a think about the plan. And indeed they do. The logic bomb rings out, the smokes go forth. And Souls must cover now. Bitter King to force down that Diffuser. Here comes the peak, but Ashen goes down. Attackers are activated. And immediately FaZe vacate the bomb site. A nigh impossible retake for SSG as the Brazilians assume strong post plant positions. Falls the first to fall. J90 finds one. But this retake seems almost impossible unless if Forrest can conjure up a position. But coming in from the backside. Cyber shuts him down. Hot and cold and J90 will fall. Vidiking finds them both. FaZe Clan once again in the lead. The trade to stop the plant. Ashen tried to make the play. We saw three of his teammates up there after he went down. They weren't there fast enough to be able to stop the diffuser. The diffuser went down. C4 wasn't able to connect. And once that case is down, you saw his phase completely flooded the site. They left Cyber in the back to flank and take his time to stop that first player who was Forrest, who tried to hop onto the fuse. FaZe has had an answer for that round. We talked about how good the Solus was for gathering information. The information was there, but the trade wasn't. Yeah, interesting round as well. They, they called out the Dokubi as they went to the plan as well, so there could be no players on cams, but you can still get on the Solus, right? And so even though there was info on the player that was planting down, they were in such a blind spot. It was Vita King getting the plant down. It was in such a blind spot from the vertical that they were eventually able to get that down safely. As Souls was there to contest the hatch directly. Oh, so FaZe Clan knew what the conditions were to get that plant down, and they planted a player straight there to make sure it could go down. Absolutely. The player that you talked about planning was Souls. The fact Five that he stood left. on top of his teammate, looking at the only angle that his teammate could have been taken down from, which was the hatch. He got that shut down into Ashen. He was there as soon as the case was put down. He completely rotated. 
and trusted Cyber to close the round out. Ash and very daring spawn peek from him. We saw them bear immense fruit for Space Station on Consulate. Clubhouse is a very different map though, and spawn peeking, oh, the spawn peeks really have been done to death. Consulate, a much newer map. A little bit harder to check for every single one of those creative spawn peaks. SSG though will not over aggress early. We're going back to Jim. This is the round where Forrest secured the bomb site using his bandit. Absolutely, and FaZe is opting out to play the Ace Thermite and falling into the same trap. They're bringing the Habana to secure that they open up multiple holes. Oh. But as we say that, it looks like none of the walls were contested. Forrest might be holding down the bathroom, which is an, might be an unexpected situation from FaZe. Two unused reinforcements, though, from SSG is a little bit of a question mark for me. And Souls has once again got good info inside, however, taken down. Cross like on the other side, though, of this breach. He's going to try and keep Cyber at bay. He's the player that hasn't been able to step his foot in the building, but FaZe Clan will call upon to try and make a dent in. Very quick bandit juggle here from Forrest, but it could well be a bait. FaZe now know about his position. He looks for a peek. He gets the down onto Cyber. He might not know it. Blind as he was. What's the play now for FaZe? Flores is down. They're trying to open up more angles, but the Azami closing off the windows, hot and cold, getting position. He's going to close off the bathroom rotate too. That was a beautiful pickup from Forrest to down the player. He wasn't able to get his first kill, but KDS is going to jump into the site. Oh, a C4 takes him down very low. But Handy can finally get one back for FaZe here. SSG have dominated on the bomb site. FaZe, like waves crashing upon a cliff, find just about nothing. Forrest is low HP as well. Searching desperately for a pick. FaZe, oh, an opportunity goes begging once again. Handy is the last one standing all alone on this balcony with four players to find and only a matter of time before he falls. Tough spot now for Hanny. One versus four is tough, but there are two players on lower HP. If he wants to make an attempt, he can go for it, but there's not a lot of time left to do it. He's going to make his way inside of Cash and can at least try and take this one to one onto J90. But oh, really nice angle that J90 has got. He's not even going to take the fight. Oh, half gun traps on the other side are going to take down Handy even lower. Just a slither of HP left. And will they give him the satisfaction? SSG say, do not move a muscle. He doesn't deserve our peak. He does not deserve such respect. SSG hold firm. And once again, tie up the score line. The first half is even as SSG move on to their attack. The discipline from SSG there not to allow themselves to get picked. Every single kill matters. The mentality in this game has been a back and forth battle between who's feeling in the driver's seat and the commanding seat. But like we said earlier, you don't judge a team on their clubhouse defenses. You judge them on their clubhouse attacks. <laughs> oh, wow. We well, missed that from Forrest. He only secured the injured player. But you can just see a goal that SSG have to continue peaking, playing aggressively from these positions. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is a complex one. There's a lot of complexity to it. <laughs> That's good from you, don't mind that one. But yeah, like you said, the side swap has happened and FaZe are now on their defending half. Ten SSG, now, Blitz has slipped through the ban face. Five seconds so remaining. Forrest is immediately going to take up that offer, thank you very much. Wow, wait. That Attack makes me think that SSG want to get their way on into the building pretty quickly. SSG absolutely knows that FaZe is a lot more of a slower team. They love to take the first floor on both maps that we've seen before. They don't have too many roaming aggressive players that are going to be going for the aggressive plays like SSG was doing. The main player they have to worry about is Cyber. Who's going to be on that Warden? So if he's the first point of contact against, contact against the Blitz, obviously that'll be an interesting interaction that we'll have to see. But they're so fast in the map. FaZe Clan not even contesting the immediate entries giving SSG what they want because they want SSG to execute. Ooh. We are this gun from Grim, the commando, packs a real punch. Two body shots could be the kill if he's got the extended barrels. Sees the player, but clever from Handy. 
or from KDS rather, on the other side. A shoulder peek. Make sure that he gets the information on Jainano's position. And Jainano decides better of taking that fight. The good part about the Grim is you're also going to be able to bring the hard reach gadget, so you'll be able to get the two hatches. And seeing an Ace and Thermite strikes to me like they're going to try to open up the church wall, which is going to put a lot of pressure on the church bomb site. So I wonder if the Blitz is going to go through blue and take the attention away while the rest of the team hits through main stairs and hits against church. I think I'd have to agree with that sentiment. SSG bringing along a whole lot of hard breaches. They will try and play the minigame onto the Moto Hatch. They did think that Souls was going to be tricking it on the other side, but Souls has actually vacated that position and they will get the Moto Hatch for free. How are they going to clear these as Army Keeper barriers in church, though? This bomb site has become a real fortress thanks to Handy. Oh, the timing! <laughs> SSG fans breathe a sigh of relief. They're very lucky that none of those Space Station players fell to that C4. And what's more, the kitchen hatch, I believe, is successfully opened. Now SSG has exactly what they need, but the only X factor that they have is going to be the Blitz. Where is the Blitz going to come from? The case is on main stairs. The case has to go through church. Handy. With this Azami, he's the perfect operator for this position. Keep a barrier in hand, but he finds the opening pick. Here comes the Blitz. Forrest moves in. Good for one. And for nothing else, folds down the ground, leaves Ashen in a one versus four. He may well be able to pick up his teammate. A gas, though, effectively locks Space Station out of this round as FaZe retreat back to site, fortified in their positions without a lot of hope here for SSG. Ashen will drop regardless. Knowing that he has to make something work. Okay. That's a nice pick and a nice first step. But Vinny King is there waiting, dancing around the bomb. He has the superior position, traded back. But Cyber, who gets the last laugh. Another solid round for FaZe. And a good start to their defense. The idea of the attack was there. The Blitz was meant to be the first point of contact going through Church. But unfortunately for SSG, they lost two right before the Blitz was able to go down and get rid of the site player. Especially the first player being Fultz with the case on main stairs. He is so isolated. When you lose that case, it's very difficult for somebody to have to turn around, especially if you're the Blitz. Even if he was able to get the second in the site, he'd have to turn around, exposing his back to the rest of the players. Phase's trade game was so perfect, and they weren't surprised by all of the openings that SSG had. Yeah, just having a look through the replays right now, you called that exactly right, even though some of the SSG plays did try and go through the backstab from the blue side of the map. You called it. KDS wasn't phased by it at all. He, take, he took those two one-to-ones, and he won them both. He wasn't phased by it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can have that once. You get that once, Fox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You've used it. You're done now. Five seconds left before. Don't say the F word. The what? <laughs> face. Don't say face. <laughs> okay. Well, then we better hope SSG starts bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may well have to say FaZe's name quite a lot here as they've had a real phenomenal performance in their first half and been able to back it up with the first round of the second. The Blitz is going to be the common thing for SSG. Obviously, they want to use the explosiveness, the explosiveness of force. Like you said, Mandy, FaZe left the Blitz up for him to play. But if he's going to bring it, everybody needs to be behind him on the same page. They can't lose people before he is the first entry into the site. Here's Cyber down below, collecting a little bit of info for the defense. He has identified that there is, in fact, no pressure whatsoever over on the gym side. Uh, sorry, on the CC side of the map as the pressure is actually coming over from Jacuzzi instead. The wall is electrified on the other side and they are worried about the bandit trick game being played, and so they will open it up with a Thermite Charge, but here goes Forrest, straight it on is, in. It is indeed a rush, oh. but Souls, from way downtown, tosses his C4, and claims two lives of FaZe, Hot and Cold looking for something, but nothing can be found. It's into the meat grinder once again for SSG, every player peaks one by one, and so too they do fall. Ashen in a one versus five, he will be given barely an opportunity to keep feeding him, and he'll lap it up every single kill. Three more. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Is it possible to give this one a go? It's always possible, especially when Ashen, the rookie, 
is on the board, it's always possible. But knowing SSG, I'd imagine they use a little bit of time to talk about what went wrong. Nope. Ashen straight into connector, looking for the third into his 1v5 potential ace. Uh, it's a huge ask. We've seen miracles happen from Space Station before. How about seven rounds in a row on Consulate? Ashen, though, this crossfire is nigh impossible. The worst thing Souls can do right now is peek, but it looks like Cyber is rounding another corner. And there comes Souls, the final nail in the coffin for Ashen's potential clutch. Here comes the fists and the pump. That's a two round lead now for FaZe. That was a beautiful intuition read from Souls to have the C4 ready to go as soon as the breach was about to open, to know that SSG was gonna rush through, whether they heard the clanking of the shield above him or he just had a lot of good prep work and knew that it was coming. He had the C4 ready to go. It gets two and stumps SSG's potential rush. Souls very much ready for that and being two rounds down, this is the final map of the best of three and it's forced SSG to take their tactical timeout. Now what would they be talking about here? They are on the attack now. So is it more of a strategy thing? Are they going to then go and change up their formula going into these final couple rounds of Clubhouse? They've really leaned into the Blitz, but it hasn't worked twice now. Surely this is the time for SSG to change their philosophy. Here's that C4 lineup. Utterly devastating for SSG. But you're right. Tactical timeout is well earned here for SSG. Two rounds down. Phase though, very composed as they move on to their tertiary bombsite choice. Even losing this round for FaZe means they go back down to Church, which was fairly dominant of an affair. And the question remains, like you said, Mandy, for SSG, do they have to pivot here? Do they have to move away from that blitz? I agree completely. They didn't play off of the blitz correctly the first round, and on that second round, that was just a beautiful round by Souls. You've got to give them the credit for that, getting the two on the initial rush. So if you're SSG, you obviously have to be asking yourself, that's two rounds where we put a lot of eggs in our blitz basket, and it has not worked. So we have to be able to take a lot more time in our next set of attacks, because you are slowly letting FaZe get the match point on defense. Now, last time that we saw SSG in this position, they did take their tactical timeout over on Consulate, and they changed their play style going into the second half, and they did amazing in their comeback. This time around, it looks like they're doing the same thing here. No more Blitz, but instead, they're still going to lean into playing the minigame, actually meeting uh, FaZe's methodology oh. by their own. Oh, the impact trick. Not only is it going to take out the exothermic charge, but it's also taken out the second half of the Selma too. What? So that hole is just a line of sight. It cannot be an entry. What happened there? How did the exothermic get taken out? It was an impact oh. trick. The, the Selma went off before the exothermic, oh. and he threw an impact through. It kind of looked like the ace potentially just the explosion just hit the side of the thermite, but it could have been the impact as well. Regardless, it's obviously going to be frustrating for SSG to deal with. Yeah, wow. Well. Minute details can really affect an attack, and we've seen that so far. Here comes a nade. Cyborg sent into orbit. A big opener from Hot and Cold. And the first time that SSG are looking poised on one of their attacks. That's exactly what SSG needed. They needed that advantage to build their confidence in these rounds. FaZe is a very slow team. They have a lot of difficult spots to clear out. But when you're able to get that extra pick on a Cyber, who is the main roamer on FaZe, you know that you have a little more of a comfortable setup when you can get ready for the execute against the other four passive members of FaZe. Ashen's made his way all the way over into Con. So as well as SSG trying to work the Kennels Wall, they've now gone and flipped their attack over on oh. the other side as well to try and work Con as well. Now the problem with this is even though they can actually get Con control, they're lacking a little bit in hard breach. Ashen's got to use one of the secondary hard breach charges to go and open up the wall. But the breach pressure has been lost for them for now. But it doesn't necessarily look like SSG is going to go through connector. The rest of the team setting up to look like they're about to completely fly on the site. You have hot and cold below. You have J90 outside rafters door, garage door. It looks like they want to get a little more of an advantage before they commit to the plant. 
thing is, there is still an Azami barrier protecting against the CCTV breach. And so SSG have few options as JNNO is now on the balcony, but they need an opener. And that could be it, but no handy shuts down Ashen, faults to fall. Hot and Cold finds nothing with his nades down below. And FaZe Clan are looking to lock out another convincing defense. Desperately moving up the stairs, Hot and Cold falls. Was that an electric claw kill? <laughs> FaZe Clan, once again, springing into action, asserting their dominance. And out of nowhere, a match point is once again set before them. Like we said, FaZe Clan have a lot of positions that they need to clear. They were spread too thin. They weren't able to deal with the first Azami. And the player behind it wasn't even getting tracked by the bees. They had no information on green, cash room, no real information on server, because remember, the walls did not get open. The amazing impact trick from FaZe was able to shut down that wall. And that's the exact same area where we saw SSG stump FaZe on the other side of things, was denying the walls. FaZe taking a page out of their book, stopping the wall, holding up in the site. It was very difficult for SSG to find a footing. They didn't use the utility correctly. Yeah, so SSG, they're trying to prove that they can play the methodical siege that FaZe played on their attacking half. But so far, it's been stunted. FaZe certainly winning out on the minigame very early on. Translated that into a win in the last round. Now we're going to go over all the way down to the basement for the potential final round of the map and final round of the series. It's up to SSG now to solve their problems and press the attack. Well, it took seven rounds in a row to come back on console. Oh, that is devastating from faults. An embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, yikes. I agree. Well, for FaZe Clan in map number one, well, they stole Skyscraper. They fired up. Vita King stood up from his chair, desperate for a reaction from the crowd. In map two, SSG themselves got that reaction, but Forrest has found his opening kill and immediately forfeits map control and saves his life, moving back out again for SSG. Very beautiful pre-play shown to get Forrest inside and out with an advantage for his team. Obviously, they had one last round, and the biggest key is FaZe has so many difficult positions to clear, especially with having KDS still inside rafters. This is feeling like almost like a, a phase style round, but from SSG. Just then, they had like four players on drones. It was only Forrest in the building. Now they've all gotten off the drones, and Ashen has made the second work for them onto KDS. Let's do it again. That was the player we talked about in Rafters. We were worried about him. Ashen wasn't. Took him down. 5v3 for SSG, but they're still Cyber. He's been the main roamer for FaZe Clan. And oh. he's going to get taken down. It's up to Vita King now as he falls back to site. And it's a flood from SSG, but Souls claims two with him. Vita King taken down from behind. SSG are not done yet. We've seen them in this position before. We said they needed five. We said they needed four. So on and so forth until they brought it to overtime. Phase on match point. Will they choke the advantage? for a second time in the series. Two more rounds. Two more rounds. That's all that the Space Station fans are thinking right now. But for the players in the server, it's got to be the last thing on your mind. As Ashton said, nothing but grey faces. That's what our opponents are to us. Baseline are going to go back down to the basement, having lost out that last round. SSG with a really nice dissection of the whole map really shutting down the Rome game that FaZe brought to them. Now FaZe are going to change their philosophy completely. Last time around they went out this basement, it was because they locked them out of the execute phase in going into the bomb site, And now they're going to do the same. Here's where the mental game will come into play for FaZe. Obviously they've been here before and we know how it happened. So knowing that now, being in this position, you know that they're probably sitting there sweating a little bit not to replay the same situation that happened in the last map. Base Clan very much leaning into the anchor centric utility. Get your plants and all the smoke, these armies, the Kaid. It's very much deja vu from the last time that Base Clan were able to win out on this bomb site. They know that SSG, the last time they had a very difficult time at getting into the site. 
Wow. Being able to execute. And I was going to note that Hot and Cold is on the Ying, which would have helped their entry a lot more because instead of bringing the Blists that needs that close range combat, that needs to be the first person in, you can throw the Candelas in as your team onslaughts the site. Well, they may not have found the kill, but SSG already have a number advantage. As FaZe sit back. And it looks like we may need to get back into the game. Quiet your cheers for yet a moment. A rehost is needed here. SSG had not shown much of their hand, but the same can be said for FaZe. 35 seconds or 25 seconds had passed in the round when the first player DC'd and not a single engagement had come out. Obviously, SSG being able to see the sight of what they're going to deal with can give them a little bit of an advantage, but they just won the last round. These technical pauses can be such a momentum killer, such a draining battle, especially after three maps of almost going all the way of every single round being played. Yeah, and the thing about these technical timeouts, we said it a couple times in the phase, uh, in the group stage as well, but you can't talk to a teammate yeah. if it's a technical timeout. You can only talk to a teammate in a tactical timeout, or just when the game is being played out, of course. So, like you've been saying, it really is a momentum stopper between these two teams. Oh, phase. Like you said, may not talk. They don't look too anxious as of yet. I always find that an interesting game, trying to read the body language of these different players. Hot and cold, closing his eyes, hands behind his head. I don't think that is a sign of stress. I think that is a sign of trying to attain the best focus he possibly can. Trying to put out of his mind the score and just focus on one round at a time, because it's only two that's needed for SSG. We know they can do it. We've seen it before. We've seen seven in a row. What's two rounds in a row? Nothing to SSG. When it comes to the mental battle, SSG definitely has a lot of practice in that. Callout being a very big mental coach, all about keeping mental fortitude, not being scared by the opponents you're facing, not being scared of the round counts, not being afraid to play every round as if it's your last. And these next two rounds absolutely can be SSG's last. And I don't think they're ready to go just yet. SSG want to be part of the conversation. I really like what they've been able to do off the back of the tactical timeout from Callout. They've been able to uh, take a little bit away from the SSG, like put a player in the map, get hot and cold in the map and try work off a play kind of play style. And now they're playing Rainbow Six and they're simplifying their process so much. It doesn't feel like this overthought process where they try and inject someone inside of the map into like a, a bit of a point of least resistance and then try and work off the back of that and see what they can get. They're playing Rainbow Six in what I would say is the way that Rainbow Six is typically played here at this competitive level. And they're dialing it back and simplifying it. The score is 6-4 in phases advantage. And for a little bit more analysis for you guys, we will toss back to the desk. Thank you so much to our Tri-Casters, doing an amazing job. Okay, crowd, do you all want SSG to win? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, we walked in here and it was quite quiet. Well, but then they was. saw us walk in and they were like, oh no, we got to bring back the hype. Am I wrong? <laughs> I, I mean, I had to say it because, I mean, the game prior, like they started doing it after they needed those rounds. And they then, needed then it. they started doing it, they won a round. So you guys got to keep doing it throughout this entire process. And it's not two rounds, they need four rounds. <laughs> Which in theory should be easier, but also now you're on attack. And it can be tougher to string those rounds together on high pressure matches when you're attacking. Because obviously you have the initiative. Well, Fox said it best. It's all about mental fortitude here. Yeah. Someone on phase has to reset everyone and say, hey, look at the scoreboard. It's 0-0. Zero, zero. Just focus on this round. Do what we can to do it. And then same thing on SSG's end. Forget that it's 6-4. Focus on what you can in that round and just keep doing it. Keep doing it until you get to where you got to get to, whether that's winning it, pushing it OT, whatever the case is, you just got to clear your mind and focus on what's in front of you. I yeah. want to talk about this map three right now and the energy levels of both of these teams. Calm and collected. This is so different than the end of map two. Like everybody in here was shaking, right? Mm -hmm. I honestly think Han Cold's like doing some sort of meditation over there. They're very quiet. This is interesting because this is a little bit of a time for them to reset. 
Yeah, and it's different from what we saw from Space Station throughout all of Swiss. You know, you gotta take, keep in mind, when we were in the Swiss phase, right, teams were right next to each other. There was a wall that blocked them so they yeah. could see each other, but they could still yell over at each other. It would scream back and forth, and SSG thrived in yeah. that environment. Now we're here in a big stage, and there's a different type of energy. Obviously, we've got a ton of people out in the crowd who are being able to bounce off Space Station, but they're no longer able to directly engage with their opponents. You can't yell across the stage. The stage is a little too big for that. So I think for Space Station, now they're in a bit of a different time where instead of hyping themselves up, instead of going out, going out and yelling at their opponents, they now need to kind of cool it down, make sure that they are locked in 100% for these last two rounds, still playing their style, still getting aggressive when they need to, but making sure that they're not losing that mental game because it's a bit of a different ball game now that we're on the main stage. And it's their phase two. They need to get out of that mental game. They were in the same exact situation last game and they lost it, literally yeah. lost every single round. So it's just a reset for phase B. You know what? We've been here before. Let's not think about last game. Let's not even think about this game. Let's just think about the round that we're about to play and how we can play the best game of Siege that we possibly can. Okay, well, we are ready to get back into the game. So let's send it over to Dev, Mandy, and Fox. Thank you very much, Jackie. We're getting back into what could be the final round of our quarterfinal day. Atlanta, is this it? Is this all that we've got in store? I think they want more. Space Station made an impossible comeback a reality on Consulate. Two rounds in a row is all they need on Clubhouse to push into overtime. The momentum has evaporated from the server. And it's time we get back stuck into it. FaZe Clan with match points once again. Before we talked about the technical timeout, we noted the Ying. We noted that SSG needed more of an explosive entry into the basement bomb site. And as we say that, the Ying is gonna come out, but so is the Blitz. Wow. SSG trying to switch up potentially what FaZe could have seen off of the cameras, getting a read on the operators, the same way as SSG maybe got a read on what FaZe Clan was gonna do in the site. So maybe we'll see a little bit difference from both. I gotta admit, I am frightful to see that Blitz pick yeah. once again. <laughs> I gotta say, my heapies have been GB. <laughs> Forrest on the Blitz has not done too well in the series so far. So like you've been saying, Dev, it does make me nervous to see him go back onto it again when their new formula seem to work pretty well. So what is this Blitz game plan? What is their intention? I think they have to wait and see how the site's set up. Obviously, the last time they attacked it, FaZe Clan was very comfortable in the positions that they were. They had two people in church, one person blue, one person dirt, and one person back armory. Everybody that attacked the site from SSG lost their own 1v1s. SSG tried to flood through blue, they tried to flood through kitchen, and the Blitz tried to push through church. The Vita King was very good in that position. He was able to drop the case from Fultz on the main stairs. And it was a very split attack from SSG where they didn't spend enough time clearing because they had a lot of faith in the Blitz to be first. But there's a lot of characters that were viewed first before the Blitz was actually a play in the round. Quite like this from SSG. They have done a full clear of the map now. Rome clear completely successful. Faceline, of course, having forfeited the top two floors of the map. It's just taking a little bit of time for SSG to have identified that. Now, will they come back to bite them? The mid round now is starting to play out, and they do have uh, the EMPs of Faults to be able to play the trick game, the trick mini game against Souls over on the other side on the KE. So, if they can, they can open up the hatches that they might desire. Oh, that C4 lies in wait. Faults don't get too close. I think they have a good understanding of this there. Yeah, it will be picked out. What worries me about this round is they only have one nade left. Oh, wow. To be able to move the phase players from their difficult back armory spots. The Thatcher are not going to get the cage. Oh! Another nuke comves flying and Faults goes down. The first pick has been secured for phase. Oh, they brought so much caution going over into Kitchen. Faults even EMP'd one of the C4s on the other side. But there were two for FaZe Clan, and that's really unlocked the round for them now. Only 50 seconds left to go, oh. but Forrest can assassinate Falls in through dirt. So dangerous whenever you see that shield. Aim down sights. Here comes J9. No, he has been heard. The Blitz sets him. Space Station has the advantage. The Blitz works. And like a magic trick, Space Station steal the sight. Here comes Forrest. Timeout and we won 
Hunted. What are SSG cooking? Are they really okay with this? And well, For Forrest, he took that personally. He replies with a 4K. If there was a round that could get the crowd chanting after a technical timeout, it was the 4K off of Forrest's Blitz. And it was so drastic that it sends FaZe Clan into their timeout to figure out how they can force SSG to do an execute and deal with the blinding utility that SSG is bringing. And so SSG sustained their momentum despite that elongated technical timeout. But now, FaZe have a chance to talk to Rafadel, their coach. They have a chance to figure out how to play against Space Station in what could be the final round. And you've got to imagine, if Space Station managed to win the round following FaZe's timeout to push overtime to win their third round in a row after what happened on Consulate, I cannot imagine a world where FaZe have the wherewithal to hold on in overtime. It doesn't really look like FaZe wants to switch up too much out of the ordinary. They know that what they've been doing has been working for the most part, but SSG looks to have had a good answer. And I believe any answer can be good when you have a crowd like this behind you, chanting for you, pushing for you to get that 6-6 six, six over time. Up and out of your chairs. That's the kind of standing ovation that Forrest deserves after a play like that. Space Station, they are not out of the woods yet. One more round stands between them and overtime, and overtime, oh baby, that's where they flourish. Forrest is gonna do it again, that's all I'm saying. He's gone back onto the blitz of the Monty, I believe it was, that was teased out even before that. Now, last time that we saw Forrest try and make his way into the top floor, Souls had a pre-placed or pre-ripped C4 ready for him to run in through the Jacuzzi Breach. Will it be the same case this time? Or will Forrest take a step back and let that C4 ring out before he tries and make his way on in? The drastic difference from Forrest's blitz play last round to his other rounds was he was the primary entry for the other rounds. He was supposed to be the game changer, and FaZe was always ready for it. Whereas this last previous round on the basement, Forrest went through dirt, an uncommon spot with the blitz. You weren't expecting him to go there, and that's why he was able to get into those positions and get FaZe out of the difficult spots that they've been playing in, and he ended up with four. So if SSG is able to slow down Forrest and have him be the flanker, have pulled the attention away from him, he might be able to replicate the same kind of destruction with Blitz. Well, already SSG have made amicable early progress in this round, breaching that Jacuzzi wall. Now looking for the same here on CCTV. Forrest's is that Blitz. They're all waiting. They're waiting for their moment for the exothermic charge to pop and in goes Forrest. Looking for the player at top red stairs. The Fenrir may not matter. He's forced back and he's feeling the pressure as two players shut him down. And he finds the opening kill and manages to survive despite the onslaught from SSG. Several players looking for this one defender hiding in the corner as KDS forced down the stairs. He still survives and EMP goes out, but Cyber's found his. Devastation again for SSG, quietens the crowd as FaZe have a two-player advantage. Oh, faults. Don't do me like this. Don't make me a promise that you can't keep. You're making me believe. Souls falls on back. And SSG have brought the back the numbers. 3v3, a little bit of a standstill as FaZe Clan falls back. They want SSG to push into the site and find them, while the chants roar in SSG's favor. How will they be able to step into the site? FaZe have a complete understanding over all of SSG's positions. But the time is ticking away, and with only 30 seconds left, the space station will feel the gravity of FaZe Clan. The three remaining players on the bomb site at Spulse with the diffuser in hand to be the first incision into the defense. But this power position remains on the bomb site. This crossfire may well be too much to overcome. The first two kills, FaZe are firing in full force. And a bow before your new king. And they will not defend their major crown. SSG are done. They 
Ladies have a day with Los in the semi-finals. Faze silence the crowd. Vita King standing up, waving goodbye to the NA fans, who will most likely be here tomorrow to watch his face off, <laughs> but I bet it feels that much better as the lone FaZe fan in the crowd <laughs> celebrates <laughs> in the midst of sorrows the SSG fans chant. And after a fairy tale of map two, map three brings us back down to earth. FaZe Clan remind us just what that name means. Time and time again, they have been here at the Mages. They've even won one two years ago for God's sake. And they say that one is not enough. GG's after a valiant effort from SSG, but there is no doubt about who were the better team in the server today. Heartbreak for SSG and for the crowd here in Atlanta, but I know that there are so many fans back at home as well, over in Brazil, that will be absolutely thrilled with the result today. And of course, Rainbow Six is the game for the world. And with that, North America will say goodbye to their final team remaining at the Major in Atlanta. It will either be Europe or Brazil to take the trophy here. And in fact, every single team in the Major remaining has at least one Brazilian player on it, thanks to Alamau on G2. That is Fox, true. A sad moment for North America, but what a show that SSG gave us today. In classic NA fashion, you have to put on a show, win or lose. And I think that's what SSG did. And I think you got to give a huge props to Ashen, specifically his first main stage event. Congratulations to him. And of course, Ian on the stage will continue the show. Thank you very much, guys. Faze Clan make it into the semi finals. And I'm standing by with KDS. A while ago, map two, I was standing behind there waiting to come out to interview you. You could have finished this a long time ago, but you got taken right to the wire by a very strong team here. Yeah, on Consulate, uh, they are starting to peek outside the map, so this destroy us, and yeah, that, that's it. It felt like they really gained a lot of momentum. Of course, having a home crowd on your side can really help. How did you push back mentally to prevent them from getting the win here? We just ignore it because we know our potential, but it's very fun to have a crowd screaming to other teams or, or face. It's very cool. Yeah, so even if they're not cheering for you, you still enjoy having the loud crowd, right? Yeah, it's very fun because you play more serious or you have more fun playing yeah. the game. All Brazilian semi final, Los, you feeling good about it? Yeah. I think it will be a difficult game because Los uh, play very well on LCK and phase one, phase two. So, they are very good, and I don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully we win. We shall see. Congratulations. Go and join the rest of your team to celebrate, and we'll see you here once again on the stage to look back at that semi-final and stick around, because we will be speaking to Ashen very shortly as well. But to pick that one apart, Jackie in the desk, take it away. Ian, thank you so much. Great interview with KDS. Positive. I mean, honestly, how could they not be after that battle? Mm. I mean, FaZe's fortitude, their resiliency, it's impressive. They almost let us slip again, but they didn't. And that's all yep. that matters, right? They get that dub in the end. They're advancing onto the semifinals. FaZe Clan were the better team today, and they move forward because of it. Yeah, the resilience definitely showed. To be going up that far in that, in that second game, and then to lose it out straight, and then to come back again and get that lead again, be so close and almost being brought back to the same situation for them to close it out the way that they did just shows the mental fortitude, the resilience that they have and why they were the better team today. And we are ready for an interview with Ashen now. Um, Ian, take it away. Yeah, Ashen from SSG. This crowd were going nuts for you earlier. Can we just hear one more time? I know a lot of you are filtering out of the building, but 18 years old, first international stage that he's been on and he delivered. Give it up for this man. Ashen, you said you were gonna let them hang. You let those bad boys swing, baby. Oh yeah, yeah we did. They were dragging, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they were dragging. Listen, th there were times in there where it looked like you might be gonna you know, bring this whole thing back. You've got momentum on your side. The crowd were going crazy. It looks like you're having fun in the server. Despite the loss, what was that experience like for you? 
Uh, yeah, it was great playing on land and, you know, just like with the crowd, especially on NA soil, you know, I'm, I was trying to hype them up and stuff like that, you know, just, you know, get, get into it, just soak it all in. My first event and, you know, just grateful to be here. So it was great. How are you feeling going into SI now? That's where you shift your attention to. Sad that you won't be progressing here, looking towards this trophy, but you'll be eyeing up something a little bit bigger in February. Yeah, we got a long off season, you know, a lot, a lot more time to get better. So we just got to prep for that. You know, we, I think we gave a hell of a run here, so why not even make it even farther in SI? You do hear that? Someone just shouted, we're going to win SI. Do you believe? I, I'm not, I'm not jinxing anything. All right, one more time for Ashen and for SSG. The crowd loved you. The best luck in the future. Congratulations, man. You put on a, a stellar performance. All right, back to you, Jackie. Thank you, Ian and Ashen. I call him Animated Ashen. I just, I love all the pep and enthusiasm. You can see he was a little bit downtrodden there. Honestly, tossing to him, I started to get a little bit sad, but you know what? We're proud of him. Yeah. He did fantastic. Let's be positive about it. He performed so well at this tournament. I mean, for SSG, picking up a player like that, he performed in the NAL, and then you really want to see if your new player can perform at LAN, and Ashen did just that. And mm -hmm. that's something that you would want, that you can take with, that you can build, that you can capitalize off of. Ashen should be extremely proud of himself. They should all be proud of yeah. themselves. They yeah. put up one hell of a fight through this. They gave us such a good series to watch. Mm -hmm. No one wants to watch a one-sided affair, and SSG did not disappoint in the performance that they put up. Yeah, after the other NA team got 7-0, it's nice to see a team come back and fight for North yeah. America, even if they didn't make it all the way. Well, I do want to talk about FaZe a little bit more. Obviously, they won. This yeah. is huge. Okay, they're going to the semifinals. We can't sleep on them. FaZe could go all the way. They could. FaZe Clan, we talked about them as being a team expected to make it to this uh, to this phase. They're expected to make it to the grand finals as well, I would say. They've looked very good all stage long. The winners in Brazil, 3-0 through the Swiss stage, and they've been on fire. I think in these defenses, they really did a good job of just holding down and just playing more close together. What you don't want to do against Space Station is let them pick you apart. You don't want to be caught out on the roam in a 1v1 with Force rushing you down on Blitz, losing a player here, a player there. That's where Space Station creates that chaos, and they can create that victory condition for themselves, FaZe Clan. Those first three rounds on defense, they did that ex uh, expertly. And then round 12, they rock that Fenrir gadget. They rock the Dreadmine, which slows down the, the Blitz. Force, dead in his tracks, cannot extend into the cash roam. And eventually they trade it out, they get that 3v3 push, but they did enough damage on that defense by hunkering together and playing behind their utility. You've got to give FaZe credit for that. There's a big reason why they're pushing forward to the semifinals tomorrow. I mean, yeah, and you look at these stats here from FaZe in general, you know, we've talked a ton about Cyber, we've talked a ton about Veto, we've talked a ton about KDS. Each one of these players has stepped up tremendously throughout mm -hmm. these series in terms of being on top or at the bottom training. Now, it just goes to show that this team is a championship caliber team. And you can't sleep on any of these guys. Just because one guy maybe not be having the best performance doesn't mean that someone else can't step up and fill in those shoes. And Souls is one of those players right now that stepped up massively from the previous two games and now dropping a 14 and 6, 75 in cost. It's massive and 137 in EPS rating. Yeah, even in some of the rounds where Space Station were winning, FaZe had some really cool ideas. Yes. We saw the C4, the C4 bait. They toss a C4, everybody can hear it, it's not a surprise. They ping it out, right? They get the EMP. Once it's EMP, they're like, great, let's walk on into the kitchen. Do, 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 do. Boom! It's Nobody expects the second C4. <laughs> it's the mental game. They even saw it. They droned it out. They said, okay, we got a C4. Use that Thatcher. They used their last Thatcher. They walked in. Boom. Like you said, then here comes the second C4. Uh -huh. They played that beautifully. And that's, again, that's the one thing I love about Siege is it's constantly testing your mental. It's constantly keeping you prepared on your toes to not just go with the flow and expect something to go the way that it is. Anything can happen. Anything can change. Anything can happen. And what a wild day that we yeah. had. Let's take a look at the bracket and just kind of go over what what we witnessed today and what's ahead. North America and Meta going home, but we still have two regions fighting for the crown. As Ian said, three Brazilians in the semifinals, W7M, Los and FaZe Clan. And even the one European team, a Brazilian on that roster, 16 of the top 20, te uh, top 20 players playing in top four for the final crown are Brazilian. It's gotta feel good for that region. You know, they've got SI coming on up, but We've got some banger games tomorrow. No, too. we definitely got some bangers. You know what's an interesting look here? When you look at Charlotte, it was three NA teams and I think one Brazilian team. Uh -huh. Now it's three Brazilian teams and one EU team. That's a lot of pressure on G2. You're surrounded by a lot of Brazilians. Yep. So W7M, G2, Los, and FaZe are semifinalists. Do I dare ask who's going all the way? 
Uh, You're I'm, like, don't listen, do that Jackie, to me, Jackie. Okay. I've been a phase believer since the very beginning. I okay. said they go three zero. I think don't phase, you have that phase up tattoo. I, we, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. I think FaZe go all the way. I think they've proven themselves here. They've obviously won a major before. They won it all the way back in Yavle. They look really on point right now. They battled against a tough SSG. Yeah, they had some low moments, but they closed it out. That's what matters. I think FaZe take the championship. I'm gonna have to agree with that. They got challenged wow. here today. They got exploited in a lot of different areas. They had to play that mental game. They had to play that resilience into their play. So for that alone, I can see that carrying all the way into the grand finals. They do have the game matchup tomorrow against Los, a team that they're familiar with. So it's no surprise to me that we might see them just advance in that grand final. But again, Los was showing up today. They looked like a completely different team in that DZ game. Well, do not miss out on all of the action tomorrow. We're gonna roll up the schedule here. Doors open at the Gas South Arena around 11 a.m. And then the competition starts at noon. And tickets are still available. So join this amazing crowd. They were so fun. Y'all are awesome. Sending y'all so much love. Oh my goodness, I'm so sad. It's my last day for the Atlanta Major. <sighs> I know, I know, I know, that's how I feel too. Well, you absolutely crushed it. Aww. You crushed it. Get a round of applause Aww. for Jackie. Let's get a round of applause Aww. for Jackie. Very nice. You guys, I'm gonna cry, don't do that. I love this crowd so much. I, I love the Siege community. I don't even know where to start. You all are just so loving and kind and wonderful to me. You hold such a special place in my heart. I feel like I almost cry every time. Okay, <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna just wrap it up here. Thank you to both of you. I absolutely love working with both of you. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes. You work so hard, so hard. This magic wouldn't happen without you. And obviously a big thank you to all of you watching at home. Bye, see you later.